This is the Levels Network. I'm Justin Horro. This is Triple OG. Widderboo Mason. Widderboo Mason. What's going on? You celebrated 20 of the best on the yeah. weekend uh, with a couple of the old boys. Center live socials. We seen you in the tunnel, pumping up the boys. Yeah, Luke, good. you chucked it up on our <laughs> socials. How was it, mate? Give mate, it was fun. Up. It was fun. It was fun. Um, the dinner on Thursday, uh, we got pre- presented our jerseys from the current current squad. Um, which was which was special. Who did you do the jersey swap with? Kicks? With Kicks, yeah. Nice. Yeah, me and Kicks. Um, then uh, we had dinner and then they, you know, obviously had to play the next day so they're not going to stay there for a while. So they, they pissed off to back to the hotel and we kicked on. Uh, we had a great time there. A few of us um, either stayed around there and all just went out somewhere. I think I ended up at the casino. <laughs> <laughs> I think. <laughs> I ended up at the casino, a couple, uh, couple other players, pulled it up around about three. But then it was like an early start. They were early starts. Must have, must have felt good, mate. I, I get that good. nostalgic yeah. feeling myself as a fan of you guys, uh, yeah. even though I'm mates with you mm. guys now. Seeing you guys at breakfast together with the you know UJT. Yeah, and then we caught up at breakfast. And, that was about 10. And yeah. then we were like, what are we going to do now? Went back to my house, got changed, went down the bait. Yep. Uh, about eleven thirty on Friday, so they were early starts, so it was early finishes. Yeah, we don't yeah. have it. We don't have it in yet anymore. That's the best way to do it. Yeah, so most of us were home, <laughs> fucking after 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 time or some shit like that. So it was good. It was good. And then the guard of honor, we we're going to do a lap, but we couldn't do it because it was just pissing down rain. Yeah, awful, awful weather. Um, you were guard, brave in it. You were the last one sort yeah, of out of the tunnel. Guard of honor, and then they ran out, and then it was just like it was just great to see him. Great to see those jerseys too. They yeah. look good. Look, the old, the very the collar. nostalgic. The collar, just like, but the V, like the ones that we had for years. That's the only one I know at the yeah. Bulldogs. You know, so um, they might have to stick with those for a little bit. There was uh, plenty to talk about in that game. We'll, yeah, get, to that we'll get to that with game. breaking down all mm. the game. Give everyone, everyone a quick bets friends recap of how I went. Uh, not the worst week, but sort of. Right in the middle. So Storm minus six and a half, Meany any time. Uh, obviously no good. That was a cracker game too, Storm oh, versus Broncos. Uh, Roosters minus ten and a half, way off with that. Angus cried and everyone in the Ford pack scored but Angus for them. Uh, Dragons plus seven and, a half, seven and a half. Shout out to the Knights. They played the conditions mm. perfectly. We'll talk about that. Lomax, $2.60 any time. Got him on the wing. Uh, Warriors minus one and a half. RTS on his 200th scores at $3. So that was a nice salute. Manly plus two and a half. That was more... I was wanted them to win for me, mate. Obviously, uh, and Olakwati killed it. He killed it. Uh, Dolphins minus four and a half. Tabby Fido, two dollars forty. Tick tick. Both of those two, but a really high entertaining game as well. That game. Cowboys minus sixteen and a half. And Fine Fuiaki, no good. Uh, Titan shed a little Close. fight second half to to bring that game back. And Raiders minus one and a half. Absolutely did a number on the Parramatta Eels, which we'll talk about as well. Ethan Strange, three dollars seventy-five. I thought I was over when Xavier Savage makes that break down the outside. Awesome. He was there, but he puts in the kick for Levi. They still get the four points. Great work. Uh, outlay eight hundred to begin the season. The kitty's at seven twenty-six, and the profit doesn't really take much of a dent. Uh, I'm still minus seventy-three. So as always, we want everyone to be playing safe during this footy season. So please keep front of mind what are you really gambling with? And if you need free and confidential support, call one 858 Those are just if you're only new to the show, just little ten dollar bets on each, just to keep a track on how I'm going throughout the season. Oh, that's good. Uh, while you're at it, keep track of our subscriptions, whether you're on Apple or Spotify or YouTube. Uh, they're pumping at the moment, 22.5, basically going up a couple hundred uh, per week. So thank you to everyone who's just joining us for the first time or subscribing. Um, it's massive for us. And if you're on YouTube right now, get in the comments section and let us know because that's how we build out our show. I've got replies from the review show. And then we've got some nice fresh runs uh, around the bunker mace, mm-hmm. uh, around uh, the uh, – what was the other thing that we had? Sorry. Uh, yes, uh, the Tedesco hit and tackle technique. Yeah. And um, – I sort of got a bit of a thank you and some more chat around the basics around junior development, uh, which we'll get to uh, based off people who were, if you were listening to last yep. episode, uh, had a, sh- a shitload of people reaching out about that. So look, we'll, we'll delve a little bit more into that. But before we get into that, uh, just want to ask everyone, have you tried the latest BSE energy drinks? They're the ultimate solution for boosting focus. 160 milligrams of caffeine, no sugar, no carbs, has to tested. Shout out to BSC, our partners. We have the uh, coming weeks coming up, the Aqua Rugby uh, tournament, which we're looking forward to. We've got a pretty star. It's on Saturday, team. isn't it? 
It's on Saturday? Is it this Saturday? <laughs> it's this Saturday. Oh, wow. No, the following Saturday. The following Saturday. Yeah. Got a couple of Saturdays. Did you think it was this Saturday? It Mate. is 100% this Saturday. So, what do you say? Well, Lukey, thumbs up this Saturday. Bro. Yeah. He's, yeah. Well, he was it's going my like birthday this. weekend. Oh, okay. Oh, there yeah. you go. That's, that's all I know because it's on the fr- I've got Friday, the luncheon, and then like on Saturday we do that, and then Monday's my birthday. Beauty. All right. We'll get into it. <laughs> Um, but our BSC, they sponsor our dog of the week. And Mace. Yeah. This this guy, it's an unusual dog. This is an unusual dog. And this for, the, for those that are not aware, it's not necessarily we're not big stats guys. It's someone who's having an impact. Read the, the stats best. out. You I've, know the stats? You got, got the stats? I've got the stats here. It doesn't seem doesn't it doesn't look like a dog of the week stats. Yeah. So you know? oh, uh, I actually didn't even put him in because, but I've got him. I can get him up easy. I know it's 38 minutes he played, and I'm pretty minutes. sure 16 hit ups, maybe 20 touches, 120 meters. So 14, so only 14 uh, carries. But he had 20 touches, so he had five okay. that he passed. Yeah. 100, yeah, he does that really yeah. well. 112, he, he teamed up. He, he comes off the bench and teams yeah, up with a player it. nicely. I don't want to give it away. 112 metres, only 20 post contact, and I felt like a couple of those are getting wrist as well. <laughs> um, 10 tackles and five misses. 10 but, tackles and five misses. But they're different misses. Who's your BSC dog of the week, mate? Nathan Brown. <laughs> Nathan Brown from the Manly Sea Eagles, mate. The impact that he had. I watched that game. And as I said, people who listen to this show, listen to this show, my dogs of the week. It's the impact that you have. You don't. I'm not going to give it to you when you play against the Titans and you're in 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 a superior team, right? Yeah, I expect okay. you to do those things. Yep. I expect Payne Haas to trample most clubs, mm. right? But this club, Panthers, a Brookie, James Fisher, James Fisher Harris, Harris coming back, back. Leota, Liam Martin, Sorensen, Yo, all these dogs coming off the bench, and he comes off the bench. He changed the whole game. Mm. Just a couple of those things. He went at Fisher Harris. I've never seen anyone go at Fisher Harris. And Leota were coming at him hard. Mm. And he was coming off the back fence yeah. going, fucking, I'm here. Yeah. Give it to me. Yeah. And they and they still couldn't get him. He was bouncing off. And you could see Fisher was still trying to get him, man. He just got that awkward little bit of late footwork just at the end. But he gave him every single opportunity to hit him. That's what I love about that. Yeah. Dog of the week. He had five misses. But he, if he connected on those five, <laughs> they were going down. <laughs> Ten misses, 38 minutes, but the impact that he had, then he got the guys like Paseca rolling. Because yes. Paseca would have been – Yeah, Sipley, Paseca, all those guys had over 150 metres. Yep. He had 115 metres, all off the back fence, all attitude runs and all going at the best team, the best team in the world for the last four or five years, the best props in the last four or five years. Mm. Nathan Brown, Love BSC – Dog of the week. I love it. <laughs> uh, you're right. I, I was in the coverage. So Taniela Paseca didn't have a carry for like the first 15 minutes. Yes. And he comes off the bench with Sipley. They've got a beautiful little partnership together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love Sipley too. Uh, I think he he's you know, now that he's back in the team, it's going to yeah. be uh, – they've got some options, real, some real I options coming off Paseca the bench. Needs- Paseca needs to get the ball five times. He needs to set the tone. That's what I mean. We'll talk about inconsistency. When he does, he did. He played how he should have played the back end of the half. Yes. And the back end of the game, you got to start that shit against those dogs, mate. Well, I think those big guys like Fisher Harris and that they'll nullify you out of the game. Then mm. they'll play that possession game. You got to get those first touches, kid. He's too big and strong and too much, too much size to not touch the ball for twelve minutes. Mm. I can understand a winger. Mm. I can understand a five eight, but not number eight on your back. Yep. He's got too much talent and he means so much to that team. That's what they want him. If he does all that sort of shit what he played in the second bit of his game, yeah. he's going to end up with a Blues jersey. I tell, I'm telling you. Mm. He's got that talent, but it's consistency, right? Being that dog every week. You're not playing in the back row. I mean, Kowatu might not touch the ball because could go left most of the time. Mm. Or the other side back row, Ben Trebojevic, but not as a fucking front rower. Yeah, good point. I reckon he was watching your BSC dog of the week on the bench and going, get me back out there. Yeah, I, get I need this. it. And you're watching Sipley as well. Um, you're right. Uh, the last, very last carry that Brown had off the kickoff, straight into Mitch Kenny, who licked him. Oh, he got him. And Moses was trying hard to get him. It was a, by the, it's inches. <laughs> by the he, time they realised it was too late, yeah. he was off. No, nah, but it was inches that Leota and Fish yeah. just missed him. When yeah. those hits are coming, you know, like it's just those, it's just, it's that much. And if he, they connect, you're on your back because. Brownie ain't 120 kilo. No. He's about 106, 107. Max. Maximum. But yeah. he plays like he's 120. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Brownie. And I love the fact as well that he was fucking train and trial this year. Yeah, that's cool. Train and trial. Yeah. And I'm like, he deserves his flowers. Good on you, mate. Just, yeah. just keep killing it. Yeah. And uh, and don't get it twisted. 
That was a great performance they're gonna, from them. They're gonna hey, get him. That's memory bank. <laughs> that's memory bank. So they get, so next time they play, please I, watch. I, I, I don't know if they've got another regular season fixture. We'll probably have a look at that later on. Someone let us know in the comments. But they're going to see the Panthers again at some point. That's going to be in the memory bank. So Sorry. the, oh, the challenge now is to back it up. That's the first time I've seen um, Penrith pack getting. They got dealt with. They looked fatigued, mate. Yeah, they got they got a little bit dealt with. They looked fatigued. They'll be so. fucking so angry. Yeah, because that's what said. they usually lose weird games. Yep. But you know, pay back some motherfucker. Got to give credit. Got to give credit to Manly. <laughs> yeah, Manly credit, ready. bro. Oi, they they, they, they do they, play they, again, Lukey. They, they, yeah, it could be during Origin. That's Origin time, so they should be okay. As in. No, as in like those boys will be there, Nathan Brown, but like the contest in itself with potentially no Daly, no Tom, no Nathan, that, Jake. you know, it, it'll be a downer if it is, if yeah. it is indeed. So check yeah, it, 9th of June, is it? So then have a look at Origin. Six, first game, six of June. Six, yeah. First game, six of June, so it'll be the backup game. Okay. So, so again, doesn't it doesn't count. Yeah, doesn't count. It doesn't count. Getting that first prelim. But finals time, they could be seeing each other. That's what I'm saying. Um, my body science dog of the decade. Woo! What? Of the decade. My boy DCE, uh, 11 carries for 90 meters in intercept, nice and early. That sort of good, swung it? momentum. Uh, they end up kicking a penalty goal to go up 8 6. Or 20 kicks in play. Every single kick for Manly. And that's the, the beauty of DC, which I want to get to in, in a minute. 500 plus metres. Really kicked them to death against the best kick return team in the competition. Mm. Uh, six from six with the boot as well. Once Ruben, Ruben Garrick went off. Uh, one try assist. And the little cherry on top uh, in his milestone game. field goal. 310 games, mate. He becomes the most capped Manly player of all time. Um, super proud of him. As you know, Mace, you spent some time yeah, at the club as well. He's come a, a long way uh, and, you know, his career's gone full circle. And to see him, you know, the boys get around him and, and put in an effort like that. And look, it's not specifically about him. Like, you, once you go out there, once you cross the line, all throughout the week you, you talk it's about the games. held in high regard there, mate. Once when, you go over the those line. Those games mean a lot to plays that you respect, sure. mate. If you don't respect... You won't be doing those efforts. Nathan Brown won't be coming off the back fence for you. Neither will Sipley. They'll be. They'll have their games, but it's like, oh, we're playing Penrith. But they went up a level. Yeah, DC did. holds a lot of energy in that team. Just say, you know, when he first come through, he copped a lot of shit. The way that he's changed, and he's all, but he's always been the same guy to me. Mm. It was just the image that they try to portray, mm. and he hasn't worked on his image or anything. It's just changed the narrative, right? Yeah. Because they know DC is a good bloke. He's not. He's not. He's not around Chalky or Snake and Killer and all those OGs that were in the club. They had to earn all their respect. It was a different fucking era back then. Yep. This is his team. Yeah, And he'll crack all records. He's got another two years He's in coming him if from. he wants to play. He's coming from. But I, well uh, done, DCU. I played golf with him last week and I was – this is just a, a general conversation. I was, I was thinking about it a little bit after. I was like – what do you put like? What do you put down specifically to the longevity? And he goes, the 2016 was a make or break season for him. Yeah. And dealing with uh, changing of the guard, you mm -hmm. talk about all those players that yeah. were legends of the club that had moved on. Uh, he was uh, uh, given the skipper. Uh, he, he they gave him the captaincy, and that wasn't smooth sailing to begin with as well. And he goes through this period where he gets dropped from Origin. He isn't part of that team for a while, but uh, I think. His habits in and around, this is good lessons for players that are going through it now. I think so many players go through this throughout their career where, you know, everyone goes through the honeymoon, peri honeymoon period. If you play just say 100 plus games, even like to mm. my level, Mace, where you go, yeah, this is all right. And then the, the week in, week out grind of NRL Get just you. gets people. And some people cave and some people go off and, and, you know, can't handle it and have really good 150 to 200 game careers, whatever they may have. Or, you know, you look at the legends, they find a way, they change from habits, the uh, the preparation, his preparation in and around the game. Evolve. They evolve. Yeah. Um, As humans. Yeah. And and I uh, um, he's, at, he's at the point now, and you look at some of the playmakers in the game right now. Um, it's very comfortable in his skin. And yes. now when he goes out his to leadership. play, his leadership, the way he talks, the way he holds himself, the way he does interviews. Yep. You know, when he first come on the scene, I remember going, who's this little fucking <laughs> – <laughs> little preppy little thing, you know what I mean? And yeah. then, you know, like, and yeah. that was just the way that he was co he cultivated his image, you know. And everyone who knows him wasn't everyone's was like, does he really talk like that? He's yeah, he, sorry, I mean, it was a little bit put on, but you know, now he just he's comfortable in his own skin. He says what he wants. He's highly respected in the game. So, 
Well done, DCE. Yep, shout out DC, my BSC dog of the decade. What you- All right, mate, let's get to our YouTube replies, and I fucking love this one, and I think you would agree. Uh, we talked about last week, it was so much chat in and around the uh, Immortals and potential Hall of Fame mm. debate. So I've got a couple of replies that I love. Um, Jamie Gillespie uh, wrote this one. Ray Warren should have a place as an immortal. There's not many that I would consider who haven't played the game, but geez, Ray Warren's a good shout because the game without Ray Warren. He's the voice. He's the voice of the game. 80s, 90s, 2000s, 2010s until he retired. How weird would the game be with all those historic moments we've had without Ray Warren? It would be totally different. Totally different. And I think when they do induct some players, he will be – I mean, some players and journalists and that, but he should be one of the first first ballot. Yeah. He's done so much for the game. Rabs, you know, even you, you see Rabs at like some sort of function and everyone just gravitates towards yeah. him and you just want to hang out with him and talk to him and he just loves his footy and he's a, he's such a legend of the game. I uh, When I was playing at Manly, he came in and congratulated both uh, within the same span, I think maybe Brett Stewart and Stephen Maddai. He loves Skiv. He loves yeah, Stevie Maddai, loves right? Him. And you think about some of those. And he loves a snake. He loves a snake, but like those uh, those calls on Steve Maddai when Steve Maddai was licking people and he come in and <laughs> I – been around rugby league for circles for almost my whole life with dad playing NRL. Yeah. There's not many people that can grab a room like Rabs. In a team full of stars that we had mm. and had played, um, all those boys had won competitions, all of them played Origin, all of them had played for their state. There's not one person, player, that was in that team that when Rabs walked in, and he only did it on milestone games for those boys, mm. Everyone sort of got up and, and shook his hand yeah. because he's that he's that well respected. And in he's the like that community. still. Like even in New South Wales Blue True Blues lunches and stuff like when they announce teams, you yeah. see Rabs. Oh, it's fucking Rabs. Got to go to see him. Rabs you just go and see. You shake yeah. his hand and you, even though he might not give a shit, he's just like, yeah, hey, how you going, Rabs? How Rabs? Just yeah. yell at him. I think he understands. He does. He does. He does. Yeah. He's, his, and the he's respect a champion. That he's, got. he's a champion. Um, a, a little tweak on the system, which mm. I can understand for everyone that was listening home for our Kiwi supporters. So when you're rattling off some of the uh, accomplishments instruments of Freddie and Lockie, very hard for Kiwis to have those same accomplishments because we yeah, don't have origin. Yeah. So um, Ruben Wicked should be straight in there. Yeah, okay. Stacey Jones should be there. Hall of Fame. There's two two off off the top of the head that should be straight in there. Yeah. Not Hall even of Fame. fucking worry about it. Yeah. And then and then it's like I said, because we don't have that the Kiwis don't have that uh, mm. extra origin cherry on top to yeah. sort of Doesn't put matter, their but name into immortality. Yeah. Um, but they're dominated test. Yeah. I yep. played against both those guys. They dom- they they would they would have played Origins. Yes. If they were in that, if 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 they were eligible, but yeah, they carved. They were the best. Like you know, Joey and Stacey Jones, head that, to head. That's your highest compliment to say for a Kiwi that they yeah. would have been really good there's origin no, players. Not, I mean, there's guys like I think Sonny Bill would have played, I think Roy Asatasi would have played. Um Adrian Morley would have played. Sammy. Sammy Burgess would have played. Stacey Jones would have played. Ruben Wicky would have played. Yeah, just that's just off the top of that. No disrespect to anyone else. Yeah, that's just the guys that I played there's against. Plenty, plenty there's more plenty more, but they're the guys that I played against and played with, and I'm just like they could easily handle Origin. Yeah, and dominate it. Here's one for you, and I like it as well. And I, and I believe there's a Hall of Fame, but it's I don't know much about it. So mm. like I don't think it's celebrated enough. But I like what you said about it, Mace. And uh, we got this one. Uh, tossed up by Nintendo Freak. The Immortal and Hall of Fame chat, here's what I'd do. Every year we have a Hall of Fame ceremony where up to five players, coaches, whatever, administration mm. can get inducted. Must be retired from playing at least five years. So that's what they do in the NFL yeah. as well, mate. Um, every three years we have an Immortal ceremony with mm. a maximum of two players. Um, the Immortal candidates get nominated by a panel to make up a long list. Of 15 and it gets cut down and shortlist to five before eventually it gets to one or two on that year. People can only be on the long list five times and the short status three times. So then it stops you from going, what about the 80s, you know? Mm. This is something that I think we could implement now uh, for a good system. And then um, this will ensure the immortals don't become overcrowded. And only the top of the elites get in. What, mm. got, what do you I guys think, think? I think I think something like that should be as well, That's but the immortals. Cool. But I'm just thinking like – as I said, we had a good chat about like the Hall of Fame. Mm. Should there should be more onus on the Hall of Fame? Because mm. you're talking to mortals, man. That is like that point point two percent. That end I think up less, less point, than that. Point zero 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 zero. So out of nine and a half thousand players that have played NRL, mm. there's ten people in there. 
Do you know what I'm saying? Like that's that's ridiculous, you know. We're not good so, at maths, but I'm sure it's something it's like that. Point zero zero zero. Yeah, but like, I know I know there's nine and a half thousand that, play, that, that have played NRL yeah. since 1908. Well, yeah. So when you've got ten people out of all that, yeah. But you could have a hundred people in the in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, over a hundred. The Hall of Fame stretches out for sure, but yeah. I, I like that system just I like because the system is, it I doesn't just, get crowded, and then it, you don't uh, eventually get the you know once you get past the period, and this is what happens in the NFL mm. as well, where they're like. All right, man, you were part of the, the yeah. group of five or group of ten now for a while. Yeah. Unfortunately, you're a Hall of Famer, but you will not be a candidate for an immortal moving forward. I think yeah. that's the best way. I to think go. it's good. Like a whole, I mean, and, and a lot of a lot of us that played in the eighties, nineties, and two thousands would be happy with the Hall of Fame status. Mm. But they barely put people in. Yeah. Like they'll and if they do put people in for New South Wales, they're from like nineteen fucking forty five. Yeah. Yeah, so that needs to – You know, need like to, 1980, you know. like So what? like guys who played in the 2000s will probably be dead before we get inducted. Yeah, you know what? They should really address anyone that needs to be done and say, like, we're going to go through mm. and address – pardon me. Everyone um, pre-NRL era mm. and then after that have that system of, yeah. of five per year and then that way you don't – Yeah, but it looks like five per – and even just if they started like a – because of the the NRL era, like start that. That's that's a clean way to start, yep. and then just induct everyone else before that d- that deserves it. You know, like guys like Sterlo and Brett Kenny and all these legends of of the eighties and you know the seventies, eighties, all the immortals. You know what I mean? Like so, a lot of guys that played like B- Billy Smith and all these legends played one eleven competitions in a row back in the fifties and sixties for St George. Mm. Like he's he's not in it. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that's it. That, you know, a, like that's guys, like more. it's yeah, it goes fucking further back, and I just don't think they put onus on it. And I mean, maybe it just never will be. Yeah, yeah, there needs to be some respect put on. Because at the end of the day, sure. like, like I never played the game to be a hall of famer. But you, you're definitely a hall of famer. Yeah, but I just didn't like when you're in when you're in like American sports. Yeah. To have your bust and everything like that, and it's like being Canton and all this sort of shit. That is the pinnacle of your career. Where yeah. we like, we just weren't brought up like that. Yeah, we didn't. We, we weren't, were we? We didn't celebrate. It's a difference in the cultures. Then they started fucking throwing immortals in there. And then we always went, well, fuck. Yeah. You're talking Wally Lewis. You're talking fucking Chang and Langlands and Reg Gaznias and Bozo and Mal. You know, hopefully Lockie and Freddie and all these other blokes get in there. You're just like, fuck. Then you then it's going to be JT and Cam Smith, yeah. Bill. Bill's a tough one. Yeah, I was thinking about Bill for a bit the other day. You reckon um, Bill get in there? I, I think a lot of people would like to see him in there. Mm. Oh, here's one for you. This is what I was thinking about, right? So when we throw up um, a mortal status and when you have a mortal like teams, yeah, you think – you think so, so if you think of the 80s, right, the Parramatta team, I'll give you three examples. Bulldogs and Parra in the, in the 80s. Yeah, so but the three in a row from the mm. Bulldogs, the dominant era that Melbourne Storm had – and the dominant era that Penrith, Penrith are having right yeah. now. Do you think there are a shitload of immortals in that Penrith team? No. But do you think an immortal will emerge from that team? Maybe. Maybe One. Cleary. I think Cleary, right? And the way you do it, I think the way you break it down is if you take one player out of that Melbourne Storm system, do you still think they could be as successful as they were? And for me, it's Cam Smith. Yeah. Yeah, fair, and enough, fair enough. You know, I always talk about that. Like I played against. Yeah. I play against. Like, just say, because we we hold so much onus on Origin. Mm. Like you could play fucking three hundred games, ten tests, ten Origins, and you were shit at Origin. You never, you never dominated. Mm. At the end of the day, you're sitting around and just taking the piss. And you know what I mean? Like, just like having a joke, and you'll get fucking hammered. Mm. That's the sort of things like how how bad were your origins? Yeah. You know what I mean? Because we put so much onus because it's the toughest, most, and it's it's the toughest of all, right? I think tests are up there as well. But, but we what we put so much onus. If you didn't dominate origin, have a look at Mitchell Pearce. That's a perfect example. Mitchell Pearce would have played, could have played for Australia easily. Yeah. His talent is Australia. You put him, you put him at number seven for Australia in the two thousand and tens. In front of Kronk, just for a couple of tests. Do you think he can't do a job? He would kill it for. Australia. He would have killed it for Australia, mm. but because he came, he was playing with the New South Wales team and just got fucking pumped every every year. Everyone just thinks, oh, PC's he's not good at good at rugby league. He's one of the best club players of all time. Yep. He is consistent. He's a seven out of ten minimum. Give you eight or nine, he would hardly ever play a fucking bad game at NRL. But as I said, when you retired, I fucking only remember one thing: it's Origin. It sucks. 
Yeah, I understand that for sure. Yeah. So when you that's a that's the next little part where you can you like know some can, of the players yeah. that are on the the cusp and you're tossing up you know and those guys are always going to have a great record too. Like if you think of Billy, yeah, they because they, they didn't change a team for ten years. Yeah, but my point is when you have a dominant error of a team in a dominant era. And like the Parramatta in the eighties team, it's trying to identify. I think for yeah. mortal status, is trying to pick pick a player out of that. Go, would they I, have won three in a row? Always, would they have been sorry. as dominant for ten? I years? always go throw Cooper Cronk at the Titans in two thousand three. I always feel like Cooper Cro- cop straight. No, what Cooper about Billy? Put yeah. Billy Slater in North. Yeah. Put Billy. Put him in a really in South in two thousand three. Put Bill there, mm. so he comes through that system. Put Cam Smith. At the Tigers in 2003. I feel like you put Cam Smith anywhere. I'm not just, I'm not just saying on. it's a different fucking – you're talking about a different thing. Obviously, yeah. it happened, right? This yeah. is whole hypothetical shit. Yeah, 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 but course. if you put him in a really shit system, mm. do you get those accolades? I think Cam Smith does. That's why I've got him as a, an immortal. Fuck, Cam Smith, yeah, he's a great player. Yeah. But I'm just saying, look, Billy's a fucking unbelievable player. So yeah. is JT. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's that, that – Cooper Cronk, you know what I mean? Are you a systematic player or are you that fucking player? Mm. Yeah, and that's you why. know, and that's why people uh, like just say who played against those guys are like, yeah, he's fucking, he's great. But you put him in that system in Origin, and you're like, yeah, he goes to another level. When you got Lockie, when you got the best front rowers, the best hookers, the best prop, best centers, against everything best. like that. That team from 2006 to 2014 or whatever whatever run they went on is the greatest rugby league team ever assembled, mm. ever. From Hence. fucking 1908 all the way till now. Yeah. And that's the most dominant team you'll ever play against. Don't fucking play against those guys. Mm. It's awful. Panthers, you know? Panthers team would like to have yeah, a chat to you about hey, that. But I'm talking re- the rep team sort of thing, you know. Like yeah. if you look at those names, mate, it's just – it's disgusting. Mm. Yeah, no. That's Panthers got a great team. No, There's no doubt about that. But you're not going up against the guys. that It's an origin team, man. Yeah. Yeah. Different level. Yeah. And yeah, Australian right. teams that we were playing in band, like we only got beaten one test, one or two tests. You never get beat. And also, we've probably got to see, we've probably got five more years of this Penrith dominance, really. Yeah. With Edwards, Yo, I Cleary, think so as well. Early 20s to late 20s. Yeah. But just that dominance that that Queensland had over us. You're talking origin. You know what I mean? It's not supposed to be fucking 10 in a row. You know what I mean? Like it, even if, like just say give Penrith their flowers, you can't win three in a row in this era, mm. let alone going for four. Mm. That is special, right? Yep. That's what I'm saying. When you win eight, not, when you win just, I think they were what, 11 out of fucking 12, I don't know, 11 out of 13 or something like that. Origins, Queensland. Well, Origins, yeah. yeah. It's just like, ugh, yeah. that is dominance. Oh, it was yuck for these. Yuck. Like, blue and whites. Yeah. The time there. We've got blue on the back. Hard. Uh, this one's from El Vezzi. Willie, you made an interesting point about the coaches with younger kids. My little man is interested in getting into the league and I'd love to learn more of the basics. Where would you suggest to learn that kind of stuff? I feel like there isn't anywhere near enough resources for teen team coaches to know what they should be teaching, especially when most are volunteers filling the gaps so the team can play. Cheers, lad. There was another right. guy a bit critical. I didn't put it in, but basically he's saying we have a, we're have having a crack at coaches. and, and oh, We are having a crack at coaches. No, not to the – as in I think the proper lessons for coaches because a lot of them are volunteers, right, mate? So the ones that start from the junior grades. But I reckon you, there should be a real emphasis on making sure if you're a club having the right coaches like yeah. you guys are getting at the Bulldogs now from 16 on, 16s onwards. I think all the way up until 15, the kids should just be having fun. Yeah. And, and but learning, learning, their learning fundamentals, learning, learning the craft. Fundamentals, it's very yeah. important, you know, from 12 to 16. And I've, and I've seen I've, – I've been to coaching. I've been to like, you know, local teams and I've been asked to come down and just watch how they coach and I'm just like – He's fucking wrong. Mm. You know what I mean? You're teaching the wrong wrong foot up, wrong this, like not the fundamentals that you're supposed to be teaching. The tackle technique's way off. And I'm like, don't these guys have to do a coaching fucking certificate? I know they're not I know yeah. they're volunteers, but you still have to. Yeah. You can't just roll up. So they're going to and I had to do I had to do mine. Goes over two or three days. You got to learn all these fundamentals, right? So they make it very basic, so you can. It pass is very basic, coach, mate. So you can coach the teams, like because yes. it's, it's hard getting people that are willing to do it as well. That's yeah, the I know, but like there are a lot of people that are willing to do it. So yeah. if you are willing to do it, teach teach the kids the right things. Make sure you get it right. Make sure you get it right yep. because it's a very, very, very important. They're very impressionable at that age. They're listening to the coach like they're like like your fucking Wayne Bennett. That's what they're doing as a 12-year-old. Like, oh, my God, I'm, I'm going to listen to him. I'm not getting any outside information. There's not four or five coaches have different opinions. Mm. They've got your opinion. So teach them right. Yep. You know, so like I've seen it. I've, I mean, even from a, a point of uh, Harold Matz and, you know, the development and all the stuff that I'm looking at. Like yep. we go back and like we, we 
we can coach the coaches, right? Yep. If you're not doing the right thing, you'll get told what to do. Little pointers. Little pointers, mate. And it's hard, you know, it's hard to undermine a coach and go, oh, you're not doing it the right way because he thinks he's doing it the right way. Mm. Who are you going to fucking listen to? Mm. That's our job is to try and teach you how to go. Like the little things that first grade are teaching, it's got to fucking trickle down all the way to, to, to the development, which is 14, 15. That's such an important age. As I said, they're listening to you. Everything that you say they think is the gospel. You know what I mean? So if you're not teaching him the right things, if you just want the big kid to run through everybody because he's a big guy, you know what I mean? Teach him how to pass. Teach him how to tackle all these little things. You know, it's so important coaching. It is so important. You know, like they, as I said, they are listening to everything that you say. Mm. And by the time they get to 17, 18, they should know all these little things and they don't. I think that's the beauty of the Penrith system at the moment. I think they, they've coached their coaches really well. You can see that there's uh, – the play development from the players that come into the grades or you see in that junior system is really good. And I know my dad spoke yeah. about it. I'd say one last little tip for uh, oh, yeah. for Alvesi and, and, yeah. um, and the team and I'll cross you with it, Mace, yeah. is get them watching footy. Like watch a game of footy with your with, with your son or, yeah. or a couple of his mates. When I was a kid, you can see the fundamentals and you can identify fundamentals that are wrong in first graders because not all first graders have got it as well. No. You, sometimes you see a, a, sort of – a big dumb middle through the middle that can't draw and pass, so he doesn't have a license. So just w- watch little little traits. I always say this to younger kids: if you love watching um, Reese Walsh, try to you know watch enough of try his to games. emulate your players, emulate try, your favorite players. Try to figure out like why you think he's doing it. Now you're not going to get the proper answer because you're not no. Reese Walsh, but you can watch enough um, film, watch enough games, and you start to figure out some tendencies of players. And well, what is he like going to that left edge? You know what is. He, why is Sean Johnson hitting the front runner early on in games and they're scoring tries? Mm. What is he? What? What's the thought process? You try to figure that out on yourself. So some some of it comes back to accountability. You might not necessarily be his coach, but you can be his parents. Mm. Make sure he's locked in and watching some footage. And other things. Another thing now. So just say with our ear, I think we're responsible for this next um, bunch of young kids, right? Because when we were coming up, there was no one that that could that had the knowledge like we did, right? It, the game wasn't professional in the nineties. It wasn't all that kind of stuff. And yeah, all all we know. All we know is how to be pros and and all the ins and outs of the games and what's it like to be a professional and what the first grade guys are doing, what they're learning, what we're looking at as a young kid. Outsource Nutrition. some players, mate. Nutrition. Outsource yep. players. Like you've got a shitload of players that play in the 2000s that have so much knowledge about the game that are sitting either like on a coaching staff or just, just doing whatever. You know what I mean? A, a lot of people – We I, I individually coach – about probably six or seven kids, not too much because it's fucking very draining. Yeah, very particular who I coach as well. Yeah, but you got to outsource it because the the game itself, right? I always saw this to the younger kids, right? It's like the analogy is, like, just say if you're in school, the government are just teaching you the basic curriculum. If you want to get smart and get really fucking good at school, what are you gonna do? Extra you're outsourcing. You do. You're doing. You go in the library. You're doing studying. You're doing all this kind of stuff. So yeah, that's a good point. the NRL and the development are giving you the basic curriculum. Yep. If you want to get better, outsource shit. Do Go extras. to other people. Do more extras. What am I – work on your weaknesses. Work on everything that you need. Ask your coaches, what do I need to work on? Why am I, why am I not playing? Yep. Oh, because you can't pass left to right. You can't pass right to left and you can't tackle. Hmm. Well, fucking work on it. Hmm. You, know, you know what I mean? Like why, why is it my kid getting to go? Fucking watch the tape. i got to tell that many parents, look at how he fucking plays. Hmm. I'm a straight shooter. You know what I mean? It's just like he can't tackle. Those parents would be aware you're a straight shooter, though. Yeah. So why is he not getting picked? Um, well, do you want to have a look at this? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's like you got to work on all your weaknesses. You yeah. can't just be big, strong, and fast. You got to learn how to play the game. Just because you look at it and it looks like you know it looks quite physical and fucking everything like, that, but you have got to understand the game. So ask a lot of questions to your coaches. Outsource. There's a lot of players. There's a lot of people like myself that individually coach these kids because there's not enough detail that the coaches teach. It's all about reps, 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 habits, 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 nonstop, nonstop. There's no sitting around fucking singing kumbaya going, you need to look, you need to do this and this and this. Doesn't happen. Yep. Sink or swim. If you don't fucking learn, next man up. Yeah, I like By it. By the time you're 20, if you haven't learned all these fundamentals and all the same things, all the things that we want you to learn, done. Yeah, someone, That's how cutthroat it is. It's fucked. take your spot. Yep. 
All right, uh, the last one is from Swano. Hey, lads, great episode as always. Just had a question for you guys to weigh in. I actually got one more too on the bunker, sorry. Yes. Uh, the other week in Vegas when Reese Walsh got penalised for a covering tackle on the Roosters, which was deemed a shoulder charge, Billy Slater stated it's actually the safest way for a covering fullback to make contact. Uh, he, we saw in, in the Roosters game against the Bulldogs this week a very similar situation. Teddy comes across on kick out where Teddy made a proper tackle or attempted to and was knocked out cold. Have you fellas got any insights on what fullbacks could do in this situation as we're now seeing both the extremes this year and both ended with a player off the field? What do you do? I mean – It's tough. It's so it's tough, tough for the fullbacks. Like, look what Teddy tried. He tried to put his body in the line. Like that's just the biggest, stronger man. Mm. You know what I mean? He just got his technique wrong. He just, you know, it's you know, like usually his technique's great. He would have mm. got if he just got underneath his bump, but he didn't. It was a connection right at the same time. It happens. It happens. I seen Billy speaking about it on the Sunday footy show. I yeah, what was Bill's of, take on it? Billy was saying it's very tough. It's fucking hard. Back man. in his day, you know what Billy would have done? Yeah. Kamikaze shoulder barge straight into it because those rules weren't. Uh, yeah, uh, he just what, comes straight at you. It comes straight at your head. Yeah, I mean not your head, like your gut. Yeah, he's turning his body probably at the last minute and bang, mm. getting a good lick on kick out. Well, probably you back in the day would have yeah. been you screaming down the left 100%. edge, and then he would have come in and try to lick you that way. You can't do that this day, no. in this day and age with the shoulder barge. But he also said. Um, he went too far to the sideline. So he gave kick out the opportunity to step back in. Mm. What he should have done was try Angle. to be a little bit more patient, let kick out go to the sideline and then use the sideline as a defender. Um, kick out had nowhere else or nothing else to do but to bump him off. But to step in. Like yeah. he just like, what are you doing there? He got Bang. so square. He yeah. was in front of he, him. He was. It's just like he had, to, he had to do that. Like it's not like kick out is going to – the self-preservation is out. Mm. It's just me versus you, bigger body on a smaller body. You know, sometimes they get it wrong. Yeah. Sometimes you get it wrong. You know, like Billy was one of the best cover tackles, cover tacklers in the game. The late, the later part of his career, he, he got used to set. launch his body. He used to just fucking throw his body. I'm, I'm not sure if you if you can rule a fullback the same as a front line defender. It's very hard. I was thinking about it, right? Because you, how do you change the rule that you can't shoulder barge, but you can shoulder barge if you're a fullback covering a tackle? So what if, for instance, here's my example for mm. it. This is where I, I caught myself slipping. Someone makes a break against Latrell. Mm. Latrell goes to – someone tries to draw and pass him and he uses a shoulder barge to – he just commits, bang, licks him. And, and this is not a crack at Latrell or anything, but this is just a big body and completely lays someone out. Then you start going, how come he can shoulder barge and, and you can't? So it's a very tricky – it, I don't feel like there's a proper right answer for it. Can it's you, very hard to um, – Change the description of what the shoulder barge is for a fullback to make those. I think it's really totally different. Mm. I mean, if they come flying in and like just say like draw and pass, and they're just like on, you know, fuck you, just like shoulder straight on your chest or something like, and clean you out or on your head. Yep. You know, fair enough, get sent off. You okay. know, but like there's other things when they're going for that corner. Okay, that's corner. totally different. Like even like Latrell on Fox the other week. Yes, what's he supposed to do? Of course, he yep. pulled out. He could have kneed him right in the head. He could have gone harder for he sure. He could have went hard. He pulled out and sort of re and, and just like fucking cuddled him to the ground. But the impact was still there. Do you want him just to pull out? Let him have the try? No. Nah. No, you're nah. not doing that. These guys, that's, you're the fullback. That's your job. You know what I mean? Billy was great. Most of these fullbacks are great at it. Turbo, everybody. That's mm. You're the last line of defense. Guys in the front line expect you put your fucking body on the line. Speaking of Turbo, remember we, we gave Blaze Slungy that – that hype and yeah. for sure like Turbo gets himself into a position yeah. but if Turbo isn't doesn't have to set his feet to make a decent tackle and could lick Blaze Talangi mm. maybe that tackle's different like I know the kid would showed some strength to run over Turbo he just would have went crap but because Turbo has to come in lower his position sort get of got his hip seat, square bang Talangi went straight over him mm. if maybe if Turbo doesn't have to set himself go hard kamikaze Turbo just had to went straight at him from that could angle. Could have been different. It yeah. could have been it different. It would have been different if he wasn't trying to square himself up and make it all like a professional tackle. Yeah. Because like, if he had to come straight at him from that angle, because Blaze wasn't stepping off his left. No, he comes straight He was coming him. straight at him. Yeah, both, you know what I mean? both so times. So smart from Blaze. Yeah, both, both occasions, mm. the attacker has had the – the position advantage. To, the advantage mm. to step back in. And, and it sucks it. because, like, you know, Bill speaking from experience. Yeah. So much experience, you know. So like, it's 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 hard. Like, but they're ruling everybody the same, you know. If you come in with the wrong technique, if you're doing the wrong things, if you're coming in with your shoulder first to shoulder charge, remember Billy got off that to get into a grand final, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. What's he supposed to do? 
It's body on the line. Like, it's just like I expect I expect all these fullback plays that they're putting their body on the line, I expect them to do it. Yep, so I'm I. expecting them to do I'm expecting them to do that. I'm not expecting a fullback to make a picture perfect tackle on fucking kick out or a big back rower that is running straight at you. Or on a cover saving a try cover Yeah, tackle. Like these wingers aren't they're not small. No. They're massive. There's some of them bigger than the front rows. Far there. out. Like Dom Young. You know what I mean? Like he looks huge. Toops. Ra- Suwali'i. Ravalawa. Ravalawa. They're bigger Seven. than the front rowers. <laughs> so, mate, bigger than huge. Frankie Molo. They are. Yeah. So good luck trying to stop them. And maybe got not foot- Butters Laurie. And they got footwork. Yeah. And they got palms. And they'll try and they'll, they'll can beat you both ways. Um, three ways. Bump you. Step off both feet. So good funny. luck, man. Yeah, it's very hard for the fullbacks. It's uh, I, don't I feel think, sorry for him. I don't think we answered your question, but uh, no, it's it's a very tough. Well, position Billy can't him. answer it. We're not. Yep. Uh, this last one is from Dan Vell. on the bunker. Why don't they leave the final decision to the on-field ref for obstruction, etc., and have it where the bunker can have a quick chat with the ref, ask him to have a look, at, uh, and they come to an agreement together. That way, the final decision is always on the field for the rest calls as they're the ones with a feel for the game situation. We'll also avoid the stupid decisions where the on-field ref rules one way and the bunker the other. <laughs> Union and other sports do it. This is perfect. This is what I was mm. mentioning last week. I love the idea of this and I want to add to it. Mace, the dramas and the inconsistencies in the bunkers right now are a problem Yeah, and I've got a solution. I think I've got a proposed solution anyway. I've said this before where I think – the same person should be adjudicating in the bunker. I reckon now it's become so much of an issue that it needs to be a specialised position. Get out all the referees that uh, – so basically now with the system, there's like three or four bunker referees that also ref as well. Make it a spe- specialised position. So get past referees that you maybe – bunker and that's it? That's bunker. Yeah, okay. That's it. Yep. And you can split it into – so rather than uh, getting – four to five different opinions in a bunker each week. Um, initially, I thought the one bunker group, so the group of three do the entire round, might get a bit fatiguing, might get over it. So why don't you Just do- get 10 people. Something like that. 10 no, people that do all the games. Two groups. So two groups. So um, the first group do Thursday night and Super Saturday. So you've got consistencies on the Thursday and Super Saturday. And then the second group do the two Friday games and the two Sunday games. Yeah. Do you like the idea of I that? I like the idea. So at least you know Just for be sure. Consistent. You know for sure that there are two groups each week. So if you don't do your uh, due diligence or you're not aware of who's uh, the bunker referee, you're basically just pigeonholing everyone in this big drama and issue that they've got at the moment. And then you're getting inconsistencies for the rule. Like me, Mace, me and you can watch a game and disagree on a ruling or yeah. a bunker decision. And this is just us two. So what you do is if you can't have uh, the one – Group the one group of three doing all every decision. Yeah. At least you know week in week out, and then you get an idea of sort of who's making the mistakes, and then you take that pressure away yeah. from the referees for when they do referee on field. So last night, I think it was Adam G was ref- was it Adam G who was refereeing the game uh, last night, Lukey. I don't know if this was done on purpose or whatever. We just caught some audio. There was a no- there was a knock on. From Clint Gutherson on uh, the try, uh, Mike Acevo potential try, and I heard um, Adam G talking Casey Badger through it because I think she, it sounded like or looked like she was going to miss it. Uh, um, so I like the idea of the communication between the bunker and the referee, and yeah. for me, specialise the position because they're fucking up too much and it's too yeah. inconsistent. NRL, I'll do it for you. Hos and I'll do it for you, but we're not fucking cheap. <laughs> but. <laughs> we'll fix the game. So, Valandis, just call me. What do you want? Do you want Thursdays and Saturdays or Fridays and Sundays? Oh, Fridays and Sundays. Okay. You do All the right. other one. All right, I'll All do right. Thursday because oh, I've got a super sad day. Yeah, yeah. yeah you've got three games in one day. That's <laughs> smart. Too smart. you got two, two. Um, all right, mate. Yeah, I think I think that could be – You need do, to do something. Yeah, get some, sure. get some get uh, some past referees or some yeah. plays not too far removed. And Or if you like, you look at a few of the examples from the weekend where uh, Victor Radley got sent – for 10 in the bin and he doesn't even get charged no so like they're they're disagreeing within the uh graham annesley and within Mm. the team of of what he's got week in week out before we break down the games want to give a congratulations to the rlpa player of the month and that man is dylan edwards he uh 
had a great start to the month. So they had four appearances. He scored four tries. He also kicked a few goals as well. Um, he's basically in everything, mate. Look mm. at the receipts, 197. Uh, tackle efficiency is really good for a fullback as well. But the average running meters per game, 256. God. He is just an absolute weapon. He is the heart and soul of their team, yeah. and he's doing a great job why Nathan Cleary is. So shout out to Dylan Edwards, the RLPA. That is voted by the players, player of the month. Well All right, done. let's get into reviewing the games, mate. Kicking it off, Storm defeat the Broncos 34-32 to on Thursday night. Uh, Storm just get home in a high-scoring game uh, despite um, Reynolds going down in the second half. Uh, you probably feel – Did they miss him? You probably feel a little bit better about the Broncos despite the loss, right? Mm. No Adam Reynolds second half, no Reese Walsh, no Haas, no Pia Corda, no Xavier Willison. And, and just get beat by two. And they just get beat by two. And it looks like uh, another injury coming out of the game is um, I'm having a blank on his name, the winger, Dean Mariner. He's gonna miss three to yeah. four weeks. It looked like he copped a knock in the in the rib cage, got some rib cartilage injury mm. from the Xavier Coach try, where Xavier Coates launched over top of him. So yeah. Storm are good. They deserve to be up the top of the ladder. So right now the Storm have beat uh, Penrith 8-0 in, in round two. Mm. And they've defeated the other grand finalists, the Broncos, in a completely different game. Yeah. Where do you see the two form lines of the two teams, <laughs> Storm and Broncos? Very hard to read, isn't it? <laughs> Storm, I don't know how they're doing it. It's um, Jerome Hughes. Mm. I like Ellie Katoa. Um, their front row, they just seem to just get the job done and then just got that brilliance on the edge. Just fucking Walbrick's good. Coates is good. Mm. Pappy's fucking looking dangerous, bro. Pappy's bruh. back. He's the key. Pappy's back. Right? Jerome Hughes has made it at least like five or six clean line breaks this year. Yeah. Just with dummies and it gets – he really understands when the game is getting fatigued. When they're getting fatigued, he just comes into his own. A little dummy, dummy inside, like, and he just, he just, he just gets you. What's the biggest criticism that halves get all the time is not taking on the line? Man, he's the you best. Never, you never criticise that with Jerome. He's, that's been top three, he's been in top three halfback for yep. five years. Yep. He's easily been that. And he's the heart and soul of that team. He's got some big boys in the team that just, just run hard, tackle hard, fucking kick chase, all the little things, and they just don't stop. 11 players ran for over 100 metres. The entire back line – his boy, his partner's back. Money was back as well. Yeah, and plus he looked it. good. Plus uh, the two starting props had 100 and Kato and Liero also ran for 100. Have you ever seen that? 11 no. players? 100 plus? No, not for – That's crazy, eh? What was their like um, – their whole whole meterage? <sighs> must have been pretty be high. 2,000, right? Well, I just think – I think it was super – like no one was really 200. It was just a heap of 110s, heaps yeah, of – Yeah, I know, but it would have been ran over 2,000 collectively. I'll get it up here for you. Terrible. Mate, as we're talking Terrible. About. And you'd be filthy if you're the Broncos, even though the Broncos did play well. But it was an open open game. It wasn't like it was shit defense though, mate. It no, was like, it was but it was so, – they were playing – it was one of the was most so high good. quality games I've seen, even though like, – and it was good to see some good tries. Yeah. All run meters, 1697. 1697. So, and um, Broncos ran for 1,495. So, and that's about, pretty good on both sides. Yeah. So, but they'll be filthy on that meter, meterage wise, right? You want to get around about like 1,000, 1,100, especially against these good teams. Okay. Is that the, yeah. Is that you don't the really targets? want them up around uh, over 1,500 because okay. then you have a look at most, most, most of those players, right? They're getting, they're going to get over 100 meters. You don't want your back five over 100. You don't want any, even your back rolls, your filthier back rolls getting over 100 meters. Look how balanced this is, ready? So, Pappy 121, Warbrick 157, Remus Smith 122, Nick Meany 112, Savior Coach just scraped by 101. The Money Man on his return looked bouncy 131. Jerome Hughes 106, Tui Kamakamitha 166. I think that was the most. Uh, Josh King, 103, he just gets there as well. Ali Katol, 125, and Trent Liero, 111. See, I can handle so I can handle some, some of those guys, but I wouldn't be able to handle the halfback running 100 on me. Yeah, that's not good enough. No, I can handle the back five. I can it, handle a back five. Doing, I'm, I'm not handling um, a six running 100 on me. Mm. And even your back rowers, they're going to be around about 80, 70, 80. I get your prop. Your props are going to get over about 120, 130. I expect yep. that, your lock. But none of these other guys should be running over 100 yep. if you're a good defensive system. Yeah. But it was an open game. It looked fast as hell yeah. and it was just open. It was a great game. I'm just saying from a defensive perspective, if you're a defensive coach, you're filthy. Yeah. Even on and both sides. Bellamy? On both sides. What's, what's Bellamy? Yeah. Even the Bronx would be filthy yeah. going, hey, we, we ran enough metres to beat these guys. 
Yeah. You know, like what they run, six, uh, 1,400 metres, that's a lot against a great defensive system. Yeah, just under 1,500. You know, yeah, there's some big boys there. I was very happy with um, a couple of their big guys, the big um, uh, Piakura, was it? No, not Piakura. Uh, Takura. Takura, like he looked all right. I was you just like looking him? at his, I was looking at his movements. Right? He played good, like probably fifteen minutes straight. And I was, what was interesting to see how his second half was going to be. Mm. He looks good for a guy that's about six foot seven. Tall he he, he in muscles up once he figures out. Like you know, he starts a couple more preseason, preseasons underneath um, the head, uh, the S and C up there, and he'll muscle up a little bit. It'd be fucking hard to stop. Imagine if they start the game with Payne Haas when he's back. Yeah. Um, I really like what Corey Jensen's doing. I think he's he's, a, doing, he's a solid front yeah. row to go next to him. Yeah. Imagine if you have and I got we got tipped up. As remember, I was asking a question about Xavier Wilson. Mm. Apparently, he had a knock at training. Yeah. Uh, so imagine Xavier Wilson and Ben Takura coming off the bench for the yeah, Broncos team. And like just saying, two years when they're really fit. Ooh, next year, no, but they're really fit and yeah. they get they lose that puppy fat yeah. and it's like he's a still got baby fat. Ro- yeah, fat about him, got, you know, like a little mutters. You know, so um, I think you know that's just with training and just being a 19-year-old little kid, but like he's massive, but he's got all the skills. He's got a good leg speed. Doesn't mind getting fucking getting getting rough. I looked at his tackle tech. He's fucking good. He's okay, Once yeah. he gets it, people are going to be falling on their back. Yeah. And Willison's going to be there and Payne Haas is going to be there. Maybe that's that's why they weren't really freaking out when they lost Jersey Flegler. Yeah, true. You're like, okay, well, he's a young, you know, Flegler, go, he, he's done his time. Go there, get your money. They would have loved to have kept him. Of course, you would have loved to have kept him, but I just don't think these guys would have been on fuck all. Yeah, Payne Haas is on is, as much, you know, he's on the max, which he deserves. But these kids, yeah, in two years, him. man, like, but yeah. they, and it's difference between being big and mobile and strong mm. and with the skill set. That's what they've got. Yeah, they're dangerous. It's ridiculous. They're going to be. They're going to be this time next year. They're going to be even harder to stop. Just say two years, they're going to be like twenty one. But like the window, right? Because if these two guys project the way we both anticipate them, specifically Xavier Willison and Ben Takura. How, how old's Pia Kura? I mean – Pia Kura? No, the, the – Takura? Takura. I think he would be, I don't it's know, 19, 19, 20, 19, 20 or something it's like that. It's disgusting. <laughs> and as I said, I always say to these young fellas, I said, look, coming through the grades right now, what are you scared of? What they're scared of is fatigue. Yeah. That's it. I said, you are not scared of the, the, you know, the, the guy on the – the four man trying to shoot out, trying to take your head off. No one's going to fight you. There's no headshots. There's no cannonballs. There's no like lifting one leg up. The game's built for a big boy who can just handle the fitness yep. and handle the physicality of the game, but it's the speed of the game. You get those guys, they will dominate the game. That's what makes this Ben Takuda kid so like yes. it didn't look like it was a He wasn't a out of place. Him. Nah. Wasn't out of place. Willison doesn't look out of place. Had a few little injuries here and there, but like why can't I get his age anywhere? I'm looking I think he's 19. Place. They said he was not he's 19, 20. It doesn't matter. He's yeah. a fucking freak. Um just before we move off the Melbourne Storm and get away from that, this is the first time in since the end of twenty two that the Spiners played together. Pappy, Jerome Hughes, Munster, and Harry Grant. Where do you put that? Where do you rank that spine? I'm, I'm, it's two, it's number two for me. It's two or one. Yeah, it's two. It's oh, two, two or one. Broncos fully fit. Broncos, Ezra Mann, Billy Walters sort of brings. No, nah, Billy Walters brings two, it down. Probably two. Yeah, they're up there. Penrith first. I'd go Penrith, second. Storm, Broncos. Manly, I'm, I'm, Manly I'm, I'm, I'm nearly in. putting them at one because Probably. of Jerome Hughes and Munster, Pappy and Harry Grant. That's that's good. ridiculous, bro. It's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I'm still going to get just because of what Penrith had done. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, but I can understand your your thought. Penrith process, have got a lot of other better players in different positions, but yeah, now they do. Yeah. But Melbourne for had the last luxury, yeah for the last five years have had Melbourne that. had the luxury of having guys like these guys come yeah, but through. They weren't with, there. Like just say when when Harry Grant was there, you had Cam Smith. How the fuck do you get another? Guy who's nearly on like Cam Smith's level, you know what I mean? Yeah, How yeah. do you get Cooper Cronk out there and you get a Jerome Hughes? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's you fuck coaching. off. Billy Slater retires, you get a Pappenhausen. That's ridiculous, bro. Mm. It's unfair. Um, Salary cap. Ali Toll was really good, mate. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's, like- he's that next. He's ready to take that next step. I think to c- cement his name into those elite back rollers. Big, you know, Hamoli. Similar to how we viewed him Holly a couple of years Nanai. ago. I think. Yep. He's like the Nanai, he's like yep. the Hamoli. Like he's not as damaging as Ola Kawatu. Nanai's not a damaging runner, but he's got that mad like Silk. right foot and so is Katoa. He's very similar to Nanai. he hits hard. Yeah, he does. And he's, once he gets his fitness levels up to where Bellamy wants him, he will dominate. Hmm. 
What else saw on the weekend? That's against the fucking Broncos, man. Yeah. Bally loves him. You can tell. He went at it. Yeah. He'd be real non-assuming sort of like, you don't know what you're going to get. Yeah. You wouldn't say shit before games. He's and reckon he's like, super quiet, super humble, um, yeah, but he's man, a he's real – he's a, like he, he, loves his, he loves his footy. Like he's a real footy head. Um, another impressive outing to begin with. I know it got a little bit scrappy at the end. Tristan Saylor was outstanding, mate. Yeah. Um, what do you do with him? You've, if there, if you're, you know, you're fourteen, can you play nine? Can you get smoothie out there? Can you get the banana smoothie out? Or does <laughs> does he like does he is he do, is he doing a good enough job? Smoothie, because I don't. He's good defensively. Yep. Right. How long can Billy Walters play? Right. Mm. Can he play eighty in the middle? Probably if. Yeah. If if arcs, yep. but he'd be like he'd like a ten minute spell, I reckon. Yeah. So could Tristan Saylor play ten? Could and he cover play other ten positions? just in the middle? Could someone just could Tristan Saylor just be that real that force him weight force his weight in onto that bench, right? Yeah. And some of those one of those people have to go. And it's probably gonna have to be Smoothie. Yeah. He's the only one. Because he's more versatile, he can play anywhere in that back line. Halves, fullback, center, wing. And if worse, he could play nine and thirteen. Well, see, that would be similar to the way that the other team played Pappy when he started his career. Pappy started off as a 14, didn't Do he? Do that then. Come on Jerome and Hughes did it as well. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So you see so much talent in a little – in a young Tristan Saylor. He's fucking ready, mate. Mm. He can't put that kid back to reserve grade. It's, he's done his time. Mm. He's done his time. And I'm just thinking if you're looking for a little bit of X factor, when the ruck fucking slows down and then you, gotta, then you just say you pull – you get Carrigan off for 10 minutes, right? You shuffle it around, you put Smoothie at hooker, whatever, and you put him in the, in the middle of the ruck and you mm. just run. I can see Just it. go. I like Just it. go. Speed the ruck up. Speed the ruck up. Speed the ruck up. He's got all the requisite, requisite skills to, to do that. I agree. Because he can play 5-8, he can play anywhere he wants. He can just speed the ruck up. You've got to have him in your side. And if I'm, if I'm opposition and you don't have Tristan Saylor in your side, I'm like, thank you. Uh, if you're, what if you're the Raiders, for instance? Jordy Rapine is probably not a long-term solution for fullback. I know Seb Chris has played mm. there. Your Bulldogs, Blake Taff looked really good before he got leaked. I honestly don't think he's going to leave there for a while. He loves the Broncos okay. so much. And I just think he wants to solidify himself as 17, in the 17 for a year So in a, in a top-notch team. Then if he wants to go and go, look, here, fullback, come play fullback. Do you think he can play wing? Because it looks like Dean yes. Mariner is going to miss some time now. Yeah, but you got Corey Oates. I'm not sure if they're going to look at Corey Oates. Does Corey Oates come off the bench and does he play back row? Is he's is that mixed to fix it? He's looked okay, hasn't he? Yeah, it's yeah. good. It's good having that option of having a winger that can play back row. You know who's impressive? The fucking other winger, Jesse Arthur. Jesse Arthur. He's killing it. He he's might be for calling for rep honors this year. He's already placed for the Kiwis. Oh, is he Kiwis? Yeah, he's Kiwis. He's not Origin. So oh, he's played okay. New Zealand. Oh, he's played Are you Moldy. sure? He's, well, I know he's played Moldy. I think so he's that a Queenslander, bro. Anyway, he's been playing outstanding. Yeah, he he's played play twos and how hard he's running. He's playing because he knows he's one or two games off of someone. If he slips up, Oates might have his spot. Mariner might have his spot. Tristan yeah. Saylor might have Fine his spot. And time, baby. Yeah, and he's doing it, man. What he's, their the- best, he's their best outside back. Selwyn Cobbo goes pretty good. Bull back three. But <laughs> not out. You <laughs> know what I mean? Like best, right. best, best. He's the best wing. All right, he's the best winger. I wrote this down, mate, and this is this. I you agree with this. Based off that, the back fives will cause dramas for comp once team is close to full strength. Yeah. They're, Mariner's a weapon. Jesse Arthurs is a weapon. You've got Cobbo, Staggs, Reese Walsh will be back. Yeah, the best. And if any of them are out, you've got Corey Oates who can yeah. jump on the wing, or you've got Tristan Saylor who can fill in. <laughs> Broncos, man. The- that's, their that's record, dangerous. their that's record dangerous. doesn't look great, but they're going to be a problem by the end of the year. Um, Arthur's was born and raised in Auckland, New Zealand. In late 2010, when Arthur's arrived, when he's 12, he's his family moved to Gold Coast, Queensland, where he attended Kibra Park with all the Maldives. Uh, he is Maldi, Samoan, and yeah. English descent. Mm. You'd love to see him who's play the for the Kiwis. Who's bro. on the wing for the Kiwis yeah. at the moment? Dallin. Dallin. And, but Dallin didn't play last one. Ronaldo Molotalo is left wing, mm. and. He's definitely going to be there about. Yeah. He's on fire. He's had a really good 18 months. Shout out to Jesse. He's a good, good, good fellow as well, yeah. Um, that's it. Plenty. Cobo was a freak. What about that pass from Cobo on the inside? Going down the sideline. His skill line. set is crazy, man. Yeah. Wait till, he's, he, wait till he just starts getting the hang of playing centers. Like he's doing it from – it's like he's doing it just to muck around. Yeah, I'll play center. Yeah, whatever. Whatever. Just put me left center, right. Apparently, center. he's just matter. like super rats and cruisy and just like laid back, and Bruh. you can't tell. 
when you watch him play. Because he's got that dog in him when, he he, when it goes. When it goes. Uh, speaking of dogs, Friday, 6 p.m., the Bulldogs defeated the Roosters 30 to 26. Um it was a weird game, Mace. Yeah. You were there. You were seeing it live. Mm. I think you can throw the form line out of, on these two teams. You'll never see conditions like that, and you'll never see a first half and a second half like that. Yeah. But what can you take, if anything? All right, well, let's speak about the negatives and positives. Bulldogs played probably the best half I've seen them play. Yes. I, I, even that Titans game, they played a Titans team that it just was wasn't Titans. up for it. It was the Titans. This was the Roosters in those conditions. They looked great. Uh, for a half and then looked awful for a second half. Mm. So what does Kem Serraldo take out of that game? Just the first half? Yeah. No, I mean, like just 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 how good we actually can be. You know, if we're going the to get to a, pre- a premiership favourite, you know, the Roosters are going to be like we're looking for a top four, top six team, definitely top eight team by their by, – by, I don't, know. I don't their, know that. I've, by their roster. I've got my concerns. By their roster. By the roster, yes. By the roster. By you the expect roster. them to turn up and um, – especially in that, in that sort of game when they're playing for everything – and, you know, you take more positives out than negatives. Yep. You know, and I think, you know, sometimes when you're up 26, you know, what was it, 26-0? Yep. You take the foot off and then you can't – you just can't do it. And we nearly got fucking done. Yeah, no, they nearly And it would have been absolutely fucking awful in the sheds after that when yeah. you have that sort of lead. You they know? cut to some, Serraldo. You wouldn't have seen it. They cut to Serraldo and he was just sitting there. He was just like, sitting there. What is this? Surely this is not going to happen. <laughs> Surely not. And they, you know what? You know they they got themselves in a position to win. They got nearly in a position to lose, mm. but they won. Yep. All right. That's the most important. And part. that's the most important thing. A couple of soft tries, and you can just you can deal with that. Yep. You know we we lost some players there with um some head knocks and you know kicks. You know hopefully You've got he's all like right. Five players that probably aren't going to play this week. Yeah, a couple of and that's hands. fucking hard, man. Mm. You know, and they're main main players. I was happy with Burton. Yeah. I love Burton, and, and what are our strengths? That left side, right? Yep. They got the ball when they wanted to get the ball. Yeah. And look what happened. You know, Taff on the right side, like just attacking. Like just, you know, it just looked like it was free-flowing attack. You know, defense was good. Everyone showed up. Second half, obviously, it was a little bit different. But um, there's a lot of positives. About 40, about 50 minutes we played played top-notch footy. Our best footy for years. I had a chat to Reedy on Saturday morning uh, for the Miles Club of Man Missile. Yeah. And uh, I asked him, like – he set the tone. First, first carry. Dom Bang. Young yeah. had, takes his licks, Hit and then Young, yeah. and then it just won. It, it forced Dom Young. Well, not forced. It, it coincided with Dom Young having the worst game I've ever seen him play. But Reedy set the tone, and then that energy was evident for the f- whole first half. And he said the jersey presentation meant a lot to him. It was good. Uh, it and, was. And it's you, not, not, all the, not all the players are going to get that feeling, but Reedy understands the culture and yeah. understands the importance of OGs, and I think he really. Yeah, was a standout for you guys as well. Yeah, I think he was great. I think Birdo was great. I thought, um, I thought most of the forwards they ripped in Max King. You know, like Sam Hughes. You know, you're playing against a, a team that's fucking formidable. Mm. You know what I mean? They're supposed, you know, they're supposed to be that team, and we got them. Yep. You know, I think, um, I think Burton just just wanting the ball. Mm. You know, getting the turning up, defending really well. You know, like kick out, hitting, and just like. Nine breaks and just people just pushing up with the ball and just like there's just that energy that that they you know you just want every game when you lost half mm. and had to move critter to fullback and then Birdo went to the centers that's when you lost all your fluidity yeah because fluidity you know, fluidity yes and um and it suffered a little bit didn't it mm. you know because you want critter in the front line because mm. he's one of the best defenders in the game so we had to swap play fullback everything got put out of joint but end of the day. We fucking won. That's yep. it. And the team that lost, Robbo came out post game and said he wasn't happy with both the send off of Dom Young and the sin binning of Ray uh, of Ray Hadley. <laughs> Victor Radley. <laughs> did, um, was Bradley. What did he expect with uh with the Dom Young one? <laughs> that mate, I love Robbo. He's yeah. a couple times this year, I think, and it's showing. There's genuine pressure on Robbo at the moment. Mm. The results that the Roosters are getting is just not good enough. And for him to come out and say that was as clean as it gets. Blake Tuff was knocked out Before, as soon as he uh, as soon as he got hit. You, you know some other factors you got to throw into it. Dom Young's poor start to the game, so he was clearly frustrated and trying to change the game. This is what happens. And again, you, I'm being critical of of Dom Young the tackle, but yeah, you know, I can understand where he's coming from. He was trying to get a lick on Blake Tuff. He missed, hit him high. It was a send off every day of the week. And my send off in 1980. It was a 1980 send-off. Les Boyd would have got sent off for that. He questioned 
if that is the standard. Come one, on. that should be the standard because that's as bad as it gets. And then you throw into the <laughs> – you also add to it that Blake Tass also missing next week because it's category one. Um, it was as bad as it gets. Radley, I can understand the frustration because he was – they were getting back into the game and that was – the hip drop is super frustrating mm. and I don't want to delve too much into it, but I agree with him on that. Radley should have been given 10 in the bin and that could have affected the result, of course, but – Not that send-off. They've got bigger issues. Yeah. Robbo's like worrying about the wrong shit at the moment. Mm. He played a Bulldogs team that on paper they had a shitload more talent and they missed the jump on them in awful conditions. Like a 26 points put on And him. they were down 26 nil going into halftime. Like that's unacceptable for the Roosters. Yeah. They're – they're supposed know. to be a top four team. Mm. Just on their roster, don't you think? The talent. It's a top four roster talent. What does it take for them to be chasing points to start playing footy again? I don't know. They just – I'm not sure. We got off to a good start, but who cares? Like Taft scores that early try. That's not a good sign, obviously. Yeah. Off a trot, off a, off a scrum. What a, are the, a block what are, play. What, what's the communication a like block, after that try? A block play. <laughs> it wasn't even a grouse block play. No. It just was, a fucking basic block play. And that's why I knew I was just like, oh, they might be a little bit off it. Yeah. The weather sucked. Yeah, but everyone's got to play in it. Yep. Um, but I don't think I'd be worried that worried if I'm the Roosters. I am. Not at the moment. I am. If this was round 17, yeah. They got it like. They got this is what they do, mate. They I start know, slow. They're going to chase their tails. Then they get a band aid because they always finish strong. Mm. And they, you know, looked really. They play a couple of finals games last year, but it was a band aid fix. But you imagine, so last year, if they didn't screen those games together, they wouldn't have made the finals. And then what about the How pressure we, on everyone then? Yeah. So there's pressure across the road at South Sydney. There should be as equal because I think yeah. when you look at those two squads, the South Sydney and, and Roosters, and we'll get to South next or, or in uh, two games. Mm. It's too much talent on those rosters, man, to be tossing up what they're tossing up at the moment. So then what do you put that on? Do you put that on the team? Do you put it on the coaching? That's fucking hard. You know what it is? And it's I, I don't – It's how do I uh, how do I word this properly? Robbo, collectively as a group. Robbo – it's collectively as a group for sure. Yeah. Robbo and Brad Arthur are similar to me in, this, in, in, in a couple of ways. Now, Robbo's obviously got more runs on the board. He's – won a couple of competitions and Brad hasn't. Mm -hmm. But they've both been at the club for 10 plus years now and they've got their core guys. Sorry, has Brad Arthur been at the – for Parra for 10 years? 2014 he took over <laughs> after Sticky. Get 2015. Fuck. Wow, I yeah. didn't know that. Most capped uh, – Sorry, time's flown. He was coach. Sorry, guys. How quick does it go? <laughs> I'm 44 on Monday. But yeah, <laughs> but think of this, right? I was still playing when he got – I was still fucking playing for Newcastle. You, 2014. Yeah, I carved the shit out of him. 2013. <laughs> Brad, 14. Yeah, 14 he took yeah. over. 14 oh, he took over. Awesome. So my point with that is Brad and Robbo have been around for a while now. They've got their guys. Yeah. They've got their core guys. They've, the frustrating thing as a fan is you look at their team and they've got stars at every position. Fullback, halves, yeah. locks. Like there's so much talent. Like Brad's got now for ten, five plus years, Gutho, Mitch Moses, Dill Brown. Um, Mike Eceva. Junior Polo. Um, not, not wingers, but Reg. Reg, Reg, Reggie. Like he's had these core guys, same as what Robbo's had: Teddy, Kiri, mm. Sam Walker, yeah. Rads, yeah. Lindsay Collins, Jared. Now, I think the Crying. problem with it is how hard is it to be? What do they have to do for Brad or Robbo to give them a rocket? Fuck, maybe that game there. Both those, just like whatever, who, what, who whatever's, accountable. whatever, yeah. whatever's happened on the weekend for both these clubs. Mm. That's two in a row now that they've lost both of them in the row. This has been happening for a yeah, couple I know, of years. Yeah, I know, but I'm like, this yep. might be the fucking, hey, get in here, senior players. Mm. We need you guys to drive this whole thing. Mm. And they've relied on those guys to drive them there. They got to grand for finals. For 10 years. Yeah, for but 10 the, years. yes, but sometimes yeah. you need, might need something like this. This is where leadership from the top to the bottom comes in and as a playing group, and I think they've got the men there to fix it. Yep, so do That's I. what I think. I think they just drag them all in and go, what the fuck is the problem? Mm. Are we training too much? Are we training too less? Are we not hard on enough? Blah, blah. There'll be all these questions. Fix it. I'm opposite. I reckon stop asking their opinion because that's what they would have done now for 10 years because they've got they the runs. They to fix it, mate. But they, because they've got the runs on the board, yeah. they get allowed to, oh, this is what's happening. But you've got to be point. careful, right? This, yeah, of course. 
No, I'm just saying, like, you but can't you, just go, you're, you're not asking your, for your opinion, Teddy, yeah. and all this shit. We're fixing it, the coaching staff. Yeah. No, you fucking not. Because yeah. we're the ones that are going out every week. The young kids look up to us. We're not delivering. Mm. We'll fucking fix it. Mm. Trust us. We've won fuck. you know what I mean? Like, that's yeah, that's yeah, how it's yeah. got to happen. It's how it's got to happen. Otherwise, when you fucking have a coaching staff and you start pointing fingers at some of these guys, these guys that have bled for this club for ages mm. and can get it fixed, right? They can. They've got the, ta- they got the talent. They've got the, everybody to do it. Yeah. They just need everyone to buy in. That's how they word it. Mm, so that's yeah. what good coaches that's do. Good the only example that I can think of, because even Wayne, like I've, he had his super success for a long time with the Broncos, yeah. but he always sort of went to a new club. So it was a new message yeah, too. Yeah. When he gets there, you can have three or four years and you can drive the message. The only one that's had sustained success for the amount of time is obviously Bellamy. And he's got, I think Bellamy, the reason Bellamy is num- clearly number two for both of us on Mount Rushmore is because he's still got that fear factor. Mm. I, I think... I think Brad Arthur and Robbo don't have that fear factor. Oh, fuck no. If you're, if you're, if you're, <laughs> if you're, comp- Wayne Bennett has a fear factor. You wouldn't even fucking know. Well, I didn't even, that's why. But, I didn't, oh, no, I, I thought I didn't you said he did. I thought you were just saying he's getting old. No, no, but no. But fucking saying, Craig Bellamy yeah. is a scary man. I, I'm 44, right? Mm. And I got coached by both these legends. Mm. And I'm just like, and I got a really, I got along with them really well. They loved me as a person, as a player, whatever. I respect the fuck out of them, but still, I was scared. The sh- I was Intimidated. always scared, Intimidated. always, because yep. you don't know what they're like. And they're like this. They have conversations like this. You sit there, I sit here. We talk about footy. We talk about whatever. Fucking fix it. Do you think the playing groups of Parramatta and uh, Roosters fear Robbo and? and I think like so. That? I think I think so. I That's think I, I think I, I think I think I don't. I, I don't know BA personally, and I know Robbo personally, but I know they respect the hell out of both of those guys. Respect, yes. That they, don't don't get me twisted. But sometimes on that. you just don't have a fear factor. Mate. Don't get me tw- <laughs> yeah. don't get me twisted. No, 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 no. I'm just saying, maybe they're not the scariest of people. They're not Ricky Stewart. That's you my know? point. I know, but like, but that's just their personality. That's sometimes the extra edge that you need but to get can, okay, the last so, juice, sorry. the last percentage. But out how of the do they go? And they just can't. say, that, oh, so, so, sorry, what if, you know, they, I know what you're talking about, yeah. but how do they go to turn into the meeting now and go, fucking fuck you, you know, like, stick of this shit. And they're yeah. like, hey, hey, hey. I know. Drop a star. <laughs> I know. Drop one of your. I fucking know what you're saying, but I'm like, I don't think, they, I don't think they're like that. Well, look at Bellamy. Nelson Asafa Solomona isn't playing right. He now. looks good in the black. The North, the North look good. But most, yeah, the, I know. St- no, the he jersey. looks good in any he looks, jersey. No, but he looks. Yeah. I thought he was out of shape. I, no, no, he's he's, he's fucking okay. looking mint. Yeah, he's okay. He's he okay. would have just imagine you're a young kid, just got your first game. Oh, playing reserve grade dad this week. Yeah, fucking Nelson's playing. Awful. <laughs> I'm over it. I want to quit. So to my point with that, right? Yeah. So Bellamy, Nelson is clearly the top four, or five most important player in the team. Yeah. He's playing reserve grade right now, mate. What's he doing wrong? So if you're other players, you're looking at that, you're going, I better be fucking on my game weekend. So what's one thing you cannot doubt with Melbourne Storm when you watch them play? Yeah, they might lose a game, but you know they're going to turn up. Or if they have one bad performance, they're going to turn it around. Yeah. You can't say the same about Parramatta and the Roosters. No, no, no. In the last no, and, couple you never, years. and you never could. Mm. You could say that about against, against the Roosters, but you never could say that against Parra. Mm. Let's get on to the second Friday night game and the conditions were just as bad, obviously, oh, that we're wow. in Sydney up the north coast. The Knights defeat the Dragons 30-10. to 10. Um, thought the, I thought the conditions would suit the Dragons, but in hindsight, thinking about this, right, the two players that lo- look the best on the field uh, for both teams were the halves for Newcastle who have just recently – in the last two or three years come from the Super League. Mm. Jackson Hastings and he Jack Cogger, they played the conditions perfectly. And it yep. suited, in particular, it suited Jackson Hastings' games. What Your main concern is that he doesn't take the, the ball to the line He enough. fucking did. I watched him. He did a couple of times, but also, you know what he does? He's uh, very um, – he directs well. He always has hands on ball. And his favourite play is the drop and under to get to a line. Those can, What's footy one-on-one? Perfect. Conditions perfect, dropping the ball under, Completion, trying to get someone, completions. trying to get someone slipping. He played, I think, this is one of his best games he's played. Blocked the noise out, too. You see that when he scored the try? I did see that. <laughs> I just thought he had wax in his ears. <laughs> I was like, Get that wax out of your ears, yeah. mate. I thought get was, some cotton buds. Yeah, no, was, I thought he played good. He showed everyone that he is the seven for that club. Yeah, I agree. And I, we've been saying it all, all year. It's not, it's not him, he's a seven. Mm. We just need to find him a six. Yeah, I'm still and not completely. I'm, still not, I'm not complete on, I'm, I'm not. Nowhere yep. near it. I think he's still a. I think he's nearly still a fourteen. Come on and just fix it. I think he can. He's, he's another one who can speed the ruck up at lock. Yep. He can speed it up at nine. He can speed it up because 
These games are going like that. It's not all about big boys now. Have your, have your, have your big start and pack, and then you have a, maybe one or two off the bench. The yep. other guys are utilities because of the HIAs. Yeah, true. That's what I mean. It's not it's not like the 2000s when you're stacking like just four big guys off the bench. You just fucking rotate them, rotate them. What's the, what, the old saying? Is it expect the worst but prepare for the best? Yeah. Or the expect the best and prepare for the worst? That's the way. Goes. One or the other. Yep. But – I just think you know they play good. Their middles played well. I thought I thought that the conditions would have suited the Dragons because so they're I. big, they're bigger and they're stronger. They look more physical in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah, and I was just sure. like, they got fucking. It should have. They got outperformed again. I, I thought the middles. It's the best game for the Knights yeah. middles that they've played this year. Leo Thompson was finally. He had a good end to the last year. He played he was his, foreign. Yep. He played a lot better, and he really took it to yeah. Because I thought Blake Murray, Frank Molo, fucking Luch. Yeah, I thought Sua. so. They were good, but like I looked at Sloan at fullback too. I just look at him and go, that's that's the only slight in his game is defense. Mm. He needs to fucking pick that up because they're spotting him. There plays there are plays when he's in the line yeah. to get at him. The one you on Dylan I mean? Lucas wasn't good enough. Flano caught him out after the game. They asked him, Well, why did you move Lomax to fullback? He goes, It's a part of Sloan's game that's always a concern for yeah. us. And he needs to get better he's at it. He's gotta put his body in front, otherwise that won't He's got he's, too much skill and attacking yeah, power to be not being on, be, be a fullback. And he's got and he gets and he gets but the thing is he gets it's not like he's missing tackles. He's yeah. just it's the effort. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's got so much talent, but like yeah. he, he finds himself in that position where there's people and he just they just sort of overpower him. Yeah. He's not weak. He's not fucking small. He's strong. A couple I of see years fucking Jaden Campbell get his body in front. Mm. Uh, like it's been a couple of years now. That's yeah. if that's the only slide on his game. He just needs to pick it up, and and it's very disappointing for your middles as well when you defend your ass off in a couple of soft tries like that when you should have fucking held the ball up. If he looks, if he wants to look on the other side, I thought KP was excellent. The way he diffused his bombs and what KP does, KP is really um, energetic in mm. his own twenty when they're defending. So. We, we always talk about that soft A, which means yeah. it's just inside the A defender, which is the first yeah. defender from the ruck. KP often gets in there, specifically with conditions like this, and he might lead the line speed for like two or three steps. And then he steps behind. And then once the ball starts going, then he sweeps in behind, but he sets but the that's line. That's exactly and how you're supposed to that, do it. Yeah, Sloan's got to get Sloan that into his game. Sloan needs to understand. Like, it's, not, it's not the same distance between like a normal A and a B. You, they call it ghosting. Mm. So you're just – they say your first marker and then you're just next to the first marker, right? Mm. And then you just got to look at the nine the whole time. Once the ball goes past – You've done your job. You've done your job. Then you get on your fucking bike. You're looking for kicks. You're looking for, you know, whoever trying to save tries if they're hitting inside shoulders. That's it. The best hook, the best fullbacks do it because they're nonstop talking. Nonstop. The best fullbacks in the competition are the best defensive fullbacks. Yeah. Yes, like that's, all, that's the work on, man. It's just like this is something that they would constantly be working on. Mm. It's not like they're not coaching him, and if they're not coaching him, fucking start doing it. Yeah, don't expect him just to know everything, just because he can play. Yeah, I'm sure he's getting the coaching down there. Um, I mean, like what well, Flano would know more than anyone. Yeah, Flano, is, he'd be into him all the time. He'd yeah, be running drills, running drills. Because I don't think it's not his positional play. No, it's not. It's the. The fucking main bit, the yeah, effort. Yeah. When they're just powering over him and he's not he's not small. He's not small. Um Lomax had a turbulent week. Mm. They put him right wing. He still manages to find a way to do use the flick pass. He is the best at getting that, that flick, flick pass. Flick pass is ridiculous. When it, you messaged me, I was just like, holy shit. It is. I reckon in the two, five weeks into the season, of we've seen uh the best try, Xavier mm. Coates. We've seen the best try saver, Tommy Dearden, Tommy Dearden on yeah. Cobo. And I feel like we're seeing the best try assist. Yeah. That pass. It's 10 metres we, in, we, the, we, in, we, the, in the pouring down rain. We talk about the fundamentals of making a draw and pass. If he just passed that traditionally left in, it was still a bullet. Zach Lomax is a freak. He's there's, got talent, bro. There's going to be a team that gets Zach Lomax now on the cheap and he is going to be a bargain buy. I can see it. If he goes somewhere where he's just like not accounted to be the guy – but a luxury piece like potentially Parramatta or Roosters like we talked about. Yeah. I don't know where he He's so talented, Tigers, mate. Tigers still looks like the front runners for me, what we went about Oh, last yeah, Tigers. Week. Uh, well, there hasn't been any reports on the Tigers at all. So it makes me think that it's uh, – Para? You reckon it's Para? I think it's Para or the Roosters depending on the number. Much. Robbo said they're not interested in that position right side at center. his price. So that's not necessarily – 
Depends uh, what low, uh, Joey Manu does next year, yes. man. I th- yeah, I think because I think he might be gone. Yeah, I think Tupo might be gone as well. Oh yeah, well. I'm thinking. I'm thinking Toops might be uh, donning a fucking Super League jersey on. Yeah, yeah. I feel that. I think he's just done. His, I think so. He's there done should be cap space, and I think he should be doing still in like. You know, he could do two or three years over there and just mm. travel and just, you know, yeah, family yeah. time. Go catch up with his stuff. boy, Go George catch, DeFore. Yeah. Well, you know, there's a heap over there now. Mm. Um, you know, like Hargraves is over there, like that whole whole KR, whole FC, somewhere around there. He'd kill it over there. He could play another three years. So uh, I think they're going to lose some outside backs, plus Suwali. So who are you going to fill it with? Mm. If it ain't for this year, it's definitely next year. And, and if it, you're him, you'd rather go to the Roosters. And it's not like you can rely upon Billy Smith at this point of his career either. No, and and you're not. I'd look if they've brought Michael Jennings back, Jennings then there must bro. there must not be like a and well done for Jenko getting back. Resilience yeah. personified. Yeah. Dunny's fucking Dunny's um three and a half years. Dunny's penalty or whatever it is. Now he's back. He probably get his three hundredth game this year. I think he's close to it. Look, no glass houses because I've got the Grays on the side, but geez, he's got to – Maybe put a bit of colour or just get rid of the top. <laughs> Someone put Uncle Drew. It was a meme, Uncle Drew, and then um, <laughs> <laughs> there was another one. And then fucking Jenko, Uncle Drew. <laughs> Someone wrote, "Is um, is Michael Jennings playing in Perisher?" <laughs> <laughs> that got me. That Fuck, got me. they're quick. Oh, they're, they're so quick. Good. They are so quick. The internet. You look like just go. What are you talking about? I went. Oh god, he's looking great. Um, speaking of great, mate, the uh, the Warriors defeat the Rabbitohs thirty four to four. Uh, why the Warriors really did this game in second Damn. gear? Um, and there's terrible. plenty of noise around South Sydney, but I don't want to. I want to start with the positives. Yeah. The hardest part for me doing the RLPA three two one at the moment is trying to figure out who got the three and the two between Sean Johnson and Wade Egan. Fuck, they were outstanding. Um, is Egan cementing himself an origin spot? Those plays that they have around the nine, right? Beautiful. I'll give you a couple of little tips of what's happening there. It's like a hang play. Hang play, Joey Johns used to run a hang play off a of seven. Yep. They're doing it off a of nine. So Joey get a wide ball from Betsy. Someone would be going out, which would be traditionally maybe a front rower. Or a back and row. Then, or a back row. But yep. then oh, it would be a back row. Steve Simpson would be going out. And guess who's banging on that? Ben Kennedy. Mm. Or the opposite. One of them, they go, one goes out, one just goes off Joey's hip because he squares up so good. Yep. And they're doing it from a nine position now. So good. What do you think Jason Taylor copped in 2001? Billy Peden, yep. St- uh, Simo, yep. and BK. They destroyed they all, him in the all first hang half. plays. Yep. All hang plays. So what's happening is uh, Clockstad, oh, he's, hiding, he's hiding high, right behind the ruck. And then that the other guy's going out tall, who Harris does it really well, starts in and then he goes out. So he brings the A out. Mm. Marker bites, bang, straight to Clockstad. So it's nice. fucking beautiful. You know who started? And then everyone's pouring through the ruck. You know who started it from the nine? The storm back in the day. And well, they used to, yeah. Well, that was just they would as with, in the, from the nine because mm. Joey was the OG from seven. Yeah. And then Melbourne Storm copied it and put it into the nine position well, with what, Cam Smith. But what they would do there because because Cam Smith would try and get. Uh, a rookie sort of thing to bite at nine, yeah. right? He'd bite and then the seven would start and seven would go out to take the A out. because the other way. So Cronk will go there and then a little ball to, to, Billy. to Billy. So that's what they're doing even on an edge now when you're seeing Pappy go on it. Same sort of play, someone going out, someone coming in and then you can stop it all. They pick up, they, it happens so quick, but it's usually when a rookie or a person hasn't played that many games who bite, who'll bite at nine, right? It was Cam Murray this time. Yeah, but sometimes yeah, that's <laughs> you'd bite but, at nine, yeah. and it's like what the fuck, you know, you'd never expect it. Cam, did Cam Murray bite at nine? He bought. So this is this is the variation of it, Mace, which is for me as a oh, it was beautiful to watch. So for the last, they did a couple for the last eighteen months. They've been doing the classic uh, out in play, which yeah. is uh, Wade Egan uh, attracts the first marker. He engages with the first marker, flips it to Tohu Harris or Sean Johnson, depending mm. on who that player is. He runs a little out. He looks out, but then pops on the inside of Chance Nickel Clocks that whoever mm. the fullback is. So what teams have been doing is they neutralize it to a degree by that first marker not committing. Mm. Just got to lean back. And being able to make sure he gets the trailer. The variation of not throwing it to the seven or front row and Tohu Harris yeah. – by showing and faking, it got Cam Murray to bite yeah. again. So normally his his role would have been 
by the time Egan throws it, then he can go put pressure and realise it's going to be on the inside. Mm. But because he went dummy and then double pumped, oh. It's the dummy. It's the so dummy good. because you don't if you don't have your head on a swivel and you cannot see Cockstab, because you say the play's happening here, mm. Cockstab's there with his hands on his hips going, give me the ball, give me the ball. You've got to sell it. You can't just be sitting there going like that. Billy Slater was the king of that shit. When they were doing that set, like just say when Cam Smith would come to me, I'd bite Cooper Cronk would go out there. Bill's from there. Yeah, he's coming from the other so side. So if of the you ruck. don't fucking understand ruck defense and if you don't know what's going on and there's no comms. Or you're tired. No comms, but if there's no comms, watch out for Slater, watch out for Slater. Clock sad, clock sad. You'll fucking fix it because yeah. you'll just lean back. The A won't the A won't go out towards Torhu Harris because mm. all you're looking is jamming Clockstad. That's it. Mm. Your only thing. Yeah. But when you can't see him. Like, you, and you're fatigued like Cam Murray's probably been out there for fucking 65 minutes, made 100 tackles. Catch you slipping. They'll get you. Yeah. They'll yeah. get you. So it's well played, well coached, and, and it's it's the timing of it all. It's beautiful. And then they're all pouring through the ruck, and then it's try time. Egan Origin. I, I, I tossed it up last year. I tossed I, it up last I'm year. Not, I'm not, I'm, if they pick him, I'm not, I'm not even I'm not worried. Yeah. If they come, especially off the bench, if they're going to go with two nines. Yeah. Because I think I'm, I'm thinking Appy might be or, or Robson. Yeah, so it's, it's it's between those three. Yeah, and four and Kenny. Yep. Who do you pick? So I think for the balance of the team, it's very hard to leave out Appy because Appy's been there and done it for so many times, and I, I, and I think it could work because Appy and Egan actually. Um, they would have worked together at Penrith back in the day when mm. Appy was there for his first year. Yeah. Egan had to leave the Panthers because yeah, yeah, yeah. Appy was um, their hooker. But I think a, compl- a, a complimentary nine for Egan, because I think Egan should be in the team, would be one of the hard nuts in Reese Robson or Mitch Kenny starting the game. Yeah. So they take the licks out of the game yeah, yeah, yeah. and they can come back and play through the middle if required. Yeah. They can both play lock. And once Egan comes on or, or – yeah, Egan. And we're going to Robson too, and he killed it on the weekend. Robson got was some good. good nines. Yeah. Got some really good nines. It's a good problem to have. It's a very good but problem. But you, you, you got to figure it out. You've got to get it right. right team. Pick You've got to get right it right. team. Um, I thought Chance Nickel Clogstad uh, repaid the faith that Webby showed in him. He did, from the day Roger Tuovasa Shek was recruited or signed, the first person he called was Chance and said, The fullback spot is yours. There would have been external pressure mm. uh, around Roger playing fullback long term after last week, yeah. even. But he says, Chansey, the job's yours, and fuck, he didn't let you it You see down. how emotional he got as well? Yeah. I love that shit. Yeah. So it means a lot to him. That team, that team's on. I mean, look at like Fanul Blake, right? He just fucked around and he got 190 metres. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like when, you, when, you, when you're doing it so dominant like he is, right, you just forget, you know, greatness and you look at, you know, like the Payne Haases and that, the Tinos even, they're just – to seem to just throw those numbers up and you get desensitized to it and you think, oh, yeah, he's had a nice game. You look at the stats and go, fucking what? 190 meters, you know what I mean? 100 post contact meters. Mm-hmm. Like he's just. It's like the way we view uh, Toto and Edwards now. You just expect you it. Just expect so when they shit. do it, you know, they don't get their flowers. Mm. What do you think of South? Awful. JD's can got. It be, can it be fixed? No. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think they've got the uh, solutions there now. Of And this is. This isn't what? five weeks of uh, film to be looking at. This is a year and a half, basically. Yeah. They were first equal or whatever, yeah, round, 10, yeah. round 10 or 11 last year. Um, I look at the – this. Is, these are the games they've got coming up. And they're going to miss uh, Latrell for three. Latrell's gone now. for three. That's massive. So during the – so they've got Cronulla. Loss. They've got the bye and then after the bye, they've got Storm and Penrith. They could be – yeah, that's, there's no that's way. Hard. There's no yeah. way. They're lucky they dragged that game against us. Yeah, but that wasn't. I'm even saying, they, yeah. Well, I'm just saying, lucky yeah. they dragged that lucky. against us. They'll yeah. be dead last. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, I'm not sure how he fixes. this. I think he's uh, he's definitely lost the, the locker room. It's been reported that they've got this game. There'll be a what's a what do they say? It'll be what a board they, meeting. You know, there'll be a board meeting. Yeah, and I think it'll be like Russell Crowe off. Um, What's that movie? Tropic Thunder. And it's Tom Cruise. 
And he's on Tropic Thunder. You remember Tropic Thunder? Yeah. <laughs> was they, Russell Crowe in it? No. Oh, Tom Cruise. But Tom Cruise the, the plays boss. that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, who the fuck is that? <laughs> punch, his, punch him in the face. Well, I thought you were going to go Russell Crowe from fucking Gladiator. <laughs> no, no, Russell Crowe will be on the big screen yeah, from Hollywood. Yeah. Who the fuck is that? <laughs> punch him in the fucking face. Um, <laughs> I, think he's, uh, I think he's in danger, man. Yeah. He's lost, he's lost the group. Yeah. So he's um, not getting the best out of his players. Running Cameron Murray into the ground. Um, it looks like it's going to be a long year. Unless, I don't know if they can pull this out. I just don't know. I was watching. They just look tired, fatigued. It's only five weeks into the season. The the two Latrell brain explosions. I'm watching him now and mm. he just looks like he – he looks like he's just not in the game. Like he looks – when when Souths are traveling and all the trolls feeling himself, happy, he's happy and he's aggressive. Yeah, even when in he a does, good way. But yeah, in a, the way I want him to be aggressive. Even when he did that fucking shit, that that elbow that went wrong. So I think originally I he was, don't think he el- meant to elbow him in the mouth. I think originally he was trying to palm, but whatever. He got himself it. in a bad position. It was it was still bad. He got he got short. Of course, on the top. yeah. But fuck. straight away, he knew it. He sort of ah. Oh. That's a part of like Latrell's helping people up and and yeah, I don't like him helping that. Either do I. I want him to, it's I want all, him to throw I want him to push when he's, lost when, their he's edge. No, when he's trying to get up. I want his the hand on your face push push him he gets in the up. face. You fuck off. I like That's it when the he, Latrell. I like, like it when he's like Same. that. But like killing you as well. Right? He's yeah, and I, I maybe maybe he's sort of He's had enough of the whole bullshit around him every time he plays a little bit more aggressive and everything like that. And like it's just like I don't well, know. I'll just be that guy, you know. I'll just try and help everyone instead of push them in the. F- I don't know. I don't know. Mm. But I'm just. I wouldn't be helping people up if I was him. Yeah. And uh, to add uh, insult to already what was an awful performance, Lockie Ilias. Uh, yeah. Shout out to him. He looks. It was a nasty looking injury in New South Wales Cup. So you gone. So Dean Hawkins is clearly not the answer. I think we've established that in a couple of weeks. So why they dropped Ilias is, I don't know, <laughs> whatever that is. Um, do we see Co- Jack White move to six and Cody Walker to seven? Do you think this week? Eventually, maybe this week. Well, Demetrio has only got one more game. If he loses this game, he's gone. Mm. I've run, I want Cody Walker to get the ball in his hands about forty times a game. Cody was willing in this game more than I've seen him in the first mm. five weeks. But you know, you know, what was a sign for me. Actually, this is the this is the clear cut sign. Their first try, beautiful. Left, go to that shape. Latrell, really nice hands. Tips on to Jack White, who had a rough game after this. Really nice hands to uh, Isaac Thompson. Isaac Thompson, bang, does over uh, Chance. He scores in the corner. Watch the celebrations. If you're a Seals fan, go back, and this is the most concerning thing. I've said it straight away. I was like, oh, they weren't happy. They're not running in. They're not, like, excited. Really? It was just like, yeah, you know, like you've just you've just opened the game with some beautiful shape. Yeah. Should be – everyone comes in and gets behind it. It was just – they laboured in. They was, you know, the, and it oh, for me it sums up South right now. There's just because usually ev- they're jumping all over each other. We even just running in, and fucking getting yeah, but usually up they're and, jumping all yeah, over each other, barging Everyone, each other yeah. and getting into it. Um, yeah, little things like that, isn't it? Yeah, I think they're going to get pumped through the middle uh, next week against the Sharks. who are coming off the bye and should be getting Braden Hamlin Ueli back as well. So yeah. looks it's like a tough good, one. Man. Uh, we mentioned uh, this game a fair bit in our Dogs of the Week. Both of our dogs come from this game. Seagulls 32 to beat the Panthers 18. Uh, it took a very generous call. In fact, it was the wrong call. I don't know how they come to it. The Tolu Kola try. Mm. Um, and that sort of... Helped them kick away, but the second half was impressive from the bench. And Manly, are they true contenders or did we just see an off day from the Panthers? Which one? Well, they've showed me enough that they are true contenders. Okay. Like they were off like, – they, they, Nelly went off them after the St. George game. I was like, how the fuck can you do that? Especially going off the Parramatta, even though they got beat by Parramatta. Yep. The first 20 minutes was outstanding. Yeah. They just went away from all that sort of attack. And to beat Penrith any time of the year is massive. And they and I think they monster them in the forwards, which yeah, has do. never ever happened to Penrith. Um, so that was massive. A lot of my notes are around Ches and, and Brown and Sipley, so I'm glad you addressed that with Brown. Turbo for me, he's still seventy to eighty percent. Mm. Do you think, like when you're watching Turbo, 
He's not completely running into contact the same way. That's going to come. I, yeah. And that's not a knock. Uh, he was good yesterday or on Saturday. You can't get that at, you can't get that at training either. It just he needs the reps, doesn't he? Yeah, he needs to get the confidence of like, like you can't 15 games run in a row. into like three grown ass men at training and go, come on, let me drive through you. Like you just can't do it. I don't think he needs the reps in the game. I don't think he's going to get the full complement of confidence back until he gets through a full representative honors. Mm. So until he gets out of Origin and gets the knocks yeah. of Origin, and uh, you know even potentially gets a victory there for New South Wales, who are looking pretty good at the moment, as in. The players that are available. Yeah. Queensland just seem to be losing player after player at the moment. It's good. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think if we, we're sort of not breaking down Manly too much because we spoke so highly of Ches and Nathan Brown in our dogs of the week at the start. But I thought it's probably the most flat I've seen Penrith in a long time and got to yeah. give credit to Manly for that for sure. But um, they've played a shitload of footy now, yeah. the representative players, for the last three or four years. And it's similar to the Roosters. Roosters went through a really strong period there for a bit. And now you look at all their top tier plays, they look fatigued. Mm. There's part of me that worries a little bit about Penrith in the next sort of couple of years of whether they, fuck, they've won so much footy, they've played so many origins, they've played, you know, even the the Kiwi players are playing New Zealand at the end of the year in World Cups. It's got to take its toll at some point, right? It has to. And I'm not going to put that game down to that, but you can see it in some games. And when it is those games, you're like, yeah, they do look a little bit jaded. Yeah. Well, you can have one of those games every like five or six. You're afforded by I those think games. it's all right because when they're so dominant and they usually win games and I think last week would have taken a little bit out of them. Um, Who I, they just, got next I just think I just think they they can afford to have one or two really average games. They're still, you know, like Oh, they got the buy. Comes at a perfect yeah, time. Perfect they need time. to freshen up. You know, um, the game was still still in the balance. They could have still um, you know, a couple of things went their way, they could have got them, but like the Eagles they were just a superior in a lot of things. Yeah. I, I thought mean, um, Liam Martin's shoulder, he injured it last week, come back on the field against the Roosters. He needs to buy. He needs to buy back. Yeah. He's was, played a lot of footy. It's and he only plays rollers, one way. It's the back rolls, it's the Isaiah Yo, it's the Leotas, and even though Fish has lost, missed three weeks, it's a lot of footy, bro. Yeah. They're playing like 30 games a year, mm. 30, 30 plus games a year, most of those guys. Dylan Edwards is just an absolute machine. Toto and their back five are just ridiculous. You right? know why Dylan Edwards looks the best out of them? And I was thinking about this as well. He's the only one that hasn't played a shitload of rep footy. I know he represented yeah. Australia last year, but it's different. He played on the wing on and he only played one test. Yeah. Out of all the stars in their team, he's the one that looks the most consistent and the best week in, mm. week out. And he's the one with the I least amount of – I just don't think they understand how much origin takes out of you. Mm. They've been all playing like four or five years in a row. Yeah, Full origin series, full fucking well, big, big, big runs – into the semis, obviously grand finals. Yeah, World, World Cup, Cups. Yeah, yeah, the year before. Four Nations. Um, it's the fucking Pacific Cup. All Lots. that stuff. It's just putting your boots on. That's what happens. Putting your boots on, strapping your legs. That's what I mean. It's all the mental sort of stuff. You're just like, fuck, I just want a weekend off. They're the things that you don't miss, right, when you're retiring, when you're getting to the end, when you start fucking going – like it's, just, it's just that trauma of like putting your boots on. You've got to play. You've got to be up. You've got to be one of the best players. It's consistency. You've got to be disciplined to be the best players. And they're all the best players. They're nearly all the best players in their position. Yeah. And it's hard. Then when you don't have like your, your, your main man there, you know, Cleary, it's, it's hard. It's even harder because he kicks you out of trouble. They're so, losing a little bit of that field position that I always talk about. Yeah. When they're just jamming people into their into that 10 meter line, into that 10 meters, and they just come back and they just flog you and flog you, and then they get the ball on their 40, and then they're just all in great position. They, field uh, position the is real, always great. They had a real strategy of kicking the tie. It seems to be the it's, it's a copycat league. You kick the most effective play to uh, carrier. And you and you make him take the first carry and tire him out with so, a full set line. Toto's a left wing own. Yeah, left wing. Yeah, because you want because Dylan Edwards is coming out there because he's a left arm carry, right? He is, is that right? I'm he's a left arm carry. So one of the one of those ways he doesn't he doesn't have his palm effective. Yeah, still played um, awesome. So it's, yeah, I mean, he's still played awesome, and his plays he's so fit. Like he gets it on the fourth play every time just for a quick play of the ball. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like not many. You know, that's the trend at the moment. I don't see anybody doing it consistently like him. No, nah, not to his level. No. Nah. And he's always fine. He's front, then they get on the front foot, then they kick. And that's what that's what they're missing with Cleary. That's all they're missing. Because yeah. he will put it on a dime. He leads the kick chase. It's just – it's clockwork for those guys. It's almost been an advantage the last couple of years when Cleary's missed some time because he comes back a little bit fresher. Yeah. It's, it, right, it's normally right 
before finals. This time it's at the start That's of the year. Right. Yeah. Um, the Dolphins defeat the Tigers 26 to 16, and it was uh, dubbed the Master versus the Apprentice in the coaching. Yeah. Um, the Tigers were tough in defeat. Uh, they go to the top of the league, the Dolphins. Are they legit this year, the Dolphins, or is it just similar last year? Quick starters? No, I think they're better than last year. Yeah, they are. I think they are a bit more consistent, a bit more trust in the in the uh, in the system, in the young Katoa got as well. Reps. I like Katoa. I like him, man. He looks like a leader. The Flegler. He's got I mean, a nice got temperament Injun, about Kifusi, him. They were really good, you know. Like the Hammer's great. Marshall King's great. He's like, nice. You know, they're playing really good football. Really well balanced. Real complementary football for each other. Yeah. And they just they're working hard. I reckon the subtleties around the rock. Up he's number one. Wade Egan is very close number two. Jeremy Marshall King's not far yeah, off number three. Yeah. Je- Jeremy Marshall King is if it wasn't for his chronic shoulder injuries that he's mm. had the last couple of years, people would know a little bit more about him. And mm. I don't think a lot of people watch Dolphins games. But now they should be because the Dolphins are a they're a team to be to probably not this year, but like I think they'll be a pain in the ass. Don't this have year. an off game against them. No. They'll get you. They'll put points on you too. What did uh, what did the Jersey Flagler and Kafusi do? Jersey Flagler Kifusi shoulder. Kafusi his hamstring. AC. Did he? Kifusi fucking, did his that hamstring break? on that. <laughs> <hamstring>. <laughs> Sorry, Juicy. Oh, don't, fin- hey, don't come out of the blocks like that, son. Fin Diesel. He hasn't seen that much fucking uh, <laughs> space in a long time. <laughs> I said he's, doing, he's gonna do his fucking heavy. I, th- I thought it was it, a great run. They said it in commentary. I don't know if it was Mick Ennis. I thought he was laughing as well because he'd made a break. Yeah, he fucking but was. He, he was like. <laughs> Hurry up, hurry up, get with me. Um, but yeah, you've got Jeremy and Marshall what, King, uh, Katal, we mentioned it last week, and Hammer with um, Cody Nicarima chipping in nicely as well in this yeah. game. Yeah, well, Dolphins are thereabouts, man. What did Flegler do? Uh, is- Jersey Flegler had an AC issue, not as I okay. believe it's not he's a chance, but Farnworth looks to be out for a couple of weeks and um, and no Kafisi, I reckon, as well. Mm. See how much depth they got. Yeah. Uh, what about the Tigers, mate? I think, you know, in definitely this time right. last year, they would have got blown out in this game. The Dolphins completed at 89%. Fucking what? And they only still just lost this game too. You're supposed to win those games. Some good signs. Yeah. No, the Dolphins completed at Yeah, no, no, you're supposed yeah. to win those games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you'd yes. be filthy so if you did. So it's a great sign for the Tigers. Great work for the Tigers. Yeah. Um, Salad Caesar, a couple of 40-20s yeah. kicking game. It's good. I'm just trying to think about like, Stefano. What do you reckon? He had 162 metres, 41 tackles and only one miss. He also, it was reported he received a, a message from Madge this week. He's mm. Even though he wasn't part of the original 35, he's back in contention. And for me, Fucking hope so. he's been the form proper 2024 so far. Easily. He has. He's taken everybody on. Yeah. Flegler he took on. He took on uh, Reggie, Paulo Junior. and Reg last week. Like he's taken it personal. That's what I want to see from the these young props. The entire pack the week yeah, before. I want to see him do that and just, you know, because I think he's hungry. He looks fitter. He looks stronger. He's added a few strings to his bow. He can offload now. He's got footwork. He can do those block plays. He's fucking dangerous. I love it. I love seeing kids go, okay, what do I need to work on to get to that next, next, next level? Because yeah. when you're big and strong, people will just – they're going to three out you, right? Yeah. You got a little pass. You're going to get the two on ones. You got a little dummy. You got this. You got footwork. So that's what he's really worked on the he, last. He moves well for a big boy. Yeah, Similar man. to Paseca. Like Very his... strong. Oh. Strong. Paseca, yeah. Paseca, can, he can be like that. Yes. He should He should be. That's what he should be working on more. This, what you said before, this is what you want to see from Paseca week in, week yes. out. What's Stefano's yeah, doing? Yeah, what's Stefano's doing? Because last year you got a little taste of origin. And then that just gives you so much confidence. Like, okay, well, I'm fucking one of the best players in the comp now. Yep. What do I need to add to my game? I need to get fitter. He needs. He does need to get fitter. He needs Who to get Paseca? at least about. No, 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 no. Big Stefano. He needs to get about 30 minutes. He's getting about 20, 21 minutes. I think he played 65 minutes in this game. Well, he played against – when it was fucking quick as fuck that game before the para game, he was off in 20. Okay. But I'm not sure if that's a tactic thing. And then he comes back on in the last six or seven minutes. There's no one that really stands out that can come off the bench for him. Look, I'll get his minutes. So we'll have a look at his minutes for this. So uh, 66 minutes, mate. He played all but yeah. 14 in this one, so that was a big that's effort. That's great. But, I mean, the, the week before, because this game wasn't the quickest – and you know, Origins is the quickest game in the world. It was a, it was a really good arm wrestle this game. You're right. A, a, a really um, match. The week before. The week before, he played the first 20, and I think he played the last sort of maybe six or seven minutes in the first half. Yeah, okay. 
something like that. And then started the second 52, half. 52. 52. Yeah. So yeah. still playing great minutes, but yeah. just depends how you break them all down. 60 should be his fall. Yeah, yeah. And for, quality for 60. Yeah. Because by the, the only reason why they took him off against Parrot, because he was fucking tired. He's he was buggered. Yeah. But he was doing so much work. He front loaded. Yeah, he did front load. Yeah. And I love to see that because I think when coaches go, give me 20, 20 minutes of your best, I want to see him come off like that. Yeah. Which is good. And I think Benji would be doing that, set the tone. They'll get you back on the back half, and then try and get, try and end the game. I so, think he's a real leader of the club in the next. He's there. Years. He is there. He's their leader right now, mm. right now. Yeah, he's their leader. I don't know how old he's. I think he's about twenty three, but he's he's the best prop in that in that club, and he's like a top five, top three prop in the game. He the had moment. some clause. I don't know if it was around maybe them making the finals where he could potentially leave. But yeah, I know. I hope they don't. Make I the reckon finals. Benji's going to lock him up because. Uh, there is not that many front rowers on the open market. When there, he's, I think he's the best young front rower in the game mm. at the moment. I'm not. I'm not even putting Payne pa- Haas and that. They're already. They're already still solid, solid, solidified. Tino solidified. Fenua Blake is solidified. solidified. Tarpane, solidified. Tarpane, you know, big pop and that. But he's the best young prop in the game. Yeah. Just trying to think of someone. Flegler probably. He's him still- and, well, him and Flegler. Yeah. Him and Flegler then. Yeah. You know, like, I reckon they're both going to go for – they're going to be going at it for Australian jerseys and going at it for Origin for the next five or six years. Yep. Uh, I love what Buller's doing as well. He yeah. just needs to develop a passing game. A big part of his progression yeah. in the next 12 months is Benji. I reckon Benji, he's so dangerous. He's like Hamaso. If they can – they don't need to throw the double cut out like fucking yeah. Calum Ponger and Scott Drinkwater do, but they just need to have that draw and pass out the back of shape that Chance Nickel Clogs that has developed. Yeah. So Chance wasn't a the grouse ball Neither player. Neither was two of us. Either was two Neither of us. Neither was Minnie. Neither was Billy. Yeah. They don't, evolve, you evolve. You evolve, but you also don't need to have that cut out. If you just have that nice, sweet, quick tip on, soft hands, let the centre do the work, mm. then that's all you need in this day and age yeah. as well. Um, speaking of Scott Drinkwater, the Cowboys 35 to beat the Titans 22. Um, the Cowboys were never really in doubt, but they're still super erratic, mate. Mistakes. And poor missed tackles, they completed at 68% again. That's just not going to get it done against the top teams. If they can get it to 80 plus, they'll fucking blow teams out. They just need to get to 75 at this point. (laughs) I mean, like they're in the 60s. Just 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 give me 80 plus, I reckon. I'll get get there. You know what I mean? If they get 80 plus, like like they still blew the Titans off, right? 68%. That's great. But you can't be like they were against um, the Bronx the week before. Yeah, which was 60. Because you'll get pumped. Not against the good sides. Even the Titans got 22 on you. So, yeah, exactly. And the Titans at this point, like if you look at it, it wasn't necessarily to do with the Titans. It was just it, the um, Cowboys being comp- complacent with the performance. Yeah. 61% against the Broncos. I gather the Dragons is going to be not – That would have been that? disgusting. So that was their best, 86%. They were able to get back into the game. But the other bad one was the Knights, yeah, for sure. Which was the one they got beat by. They uh, they got beaten by Broncos last week. The Knights, they were 71%. So okay. pff- if they get past 80, 85, that'd be their goal. And they re- I reckon if they go, if we can get 85%, we will beat every- anyone. Yep. I've been critical of Scott Drinkwater with the errors. I don't know. Jeez, he's good. He's good. He's a top tier player, and mm. that's the frustrating thing. Yeah. I get a- as frustrated with probably Manly and Cowboys the most because when I look at them on paper and what they're capable of, and this would be the hardest part of being a coach, fuck, they make so many errors <laughs> where you go, if you legitimately can build into a game properly like the Warriors do now, like Penrith have mm. done, like Melbourne have done for 20 years, and then have joy at the back end of Haas. You could be a team that we can seriously consider a, a proper contender. At the moment, you're in the next tier down like, because we haven't seen it enough. Like pull the trigger when you have to. I mean, like I'm sick of seeing some of these fullbacks and centers, like even just say it's 20 out and they just flick it like that, like have no respect for the ball mm-hmm. at all. Like I get it just to have the quick hands if the line is just there. Yeah, Don't do it 20 out because everybody – is rushing across the bash the next guy anyway. Mm. So make sure you just hold it. Just hold it. You know what I'm saying? Do you know what I'm saying? Like you know, I, I, you know 100% exactly. know what you're like saying. If you're, if you're just there and the line is there and I just go banging and I have to flick it on, you do it. But if it's fucking 20 out, everybody's coming up and trying to smash you. So if you flick it onto the centre and the centre's going to try and do it again, the winger's just catching the ball and he's getting pumped. Mm. There's no point. 
No, I just don't understand it. The most underrated attacking feature in teams' game these days is fucking fatigue and tiring teams out. Yeah, just hold it, especially in your 20, and then the middles have got to get back. And that's what happens when you don't have OG middles, mm. right? And you just flick it, flick it, flick it, next minute you've got to defend on your 20, and next minute you're back on your line coming out of yardage because we just didn't build pressure. Mm. You don't see the good teams doing that. No. They'll yeah. hold it. The centre will hold it. He'll step back inside, then you'll get to a kick, and then like bang, and then you put, then you defend. It's not – don't give that opposition easy ball. Yeah. It's one of the worst plays – in some centers and fullbacks, fucking little Arsenal, they just go boom and they don't even look. No. I know it's good at training and everything like that. It looks and good said, on a highlight. And it when looks you get good it. when the line is just there and you're trying to score a try. Don't do a 20 out or even 10 out. Yep. 10 out, unless you've got a like, hammer outside or something like that, he might score. But everybody is screaming that way. Take your lead. You're not going to get it. You're not going to score. But like, fuck, they do it all the time. It does, it does middle's heads in. Mm. They don't want to fucking defend for you. Get in the middle yourself. Yeah. Yeah, and you can see that. God, you can see it, and you can see it in, with some middles. You're just looking at it going, yeah. little fuck. <laughs> in saying that, come September time, fuck, they're a team you don't want to play. Yeah, they look the dangerous. Cowboys. They're very dangerous. Uh, where do the Titans go from here, mate? Next week, Raiders <laughs> down there. Then they've got Manly and Warriors. I think they're going to get pumped in all games, probably. I don't see them really getting, the, um, getting a win anytime soon. And look. Foz goes down and kids, gets even man. harder. They got a bunch of kids, bro. Yeah, yeah, they do. It's hard, you know. I like the the bench uh, number seventeen come off the bench, young kid. Yeah, uh, Puller uh, fucking went hard. Yeah, he did go hard. Like just his um his defensive movements, we'll he, his name, right, mate, the way that he was running the ball, the one that he was uh, the one that he was running the ball just off the back fence. Played really good minutes. I think he's been Australian schoolboys. He's one of he's been one of their kids for a for a long time. I think he's only eighteen. So he gassed out hard. He did gas, but he. Pahulu. But he went hard. He did go hard. But his movements from marker and like just I watched him for a couple of sets of six. I was like, all right, at least that's that's a bit of a bit of a play there. Yeah. You got to play there. I thought both Firma were that was his best game since coming back from that yeah. knee injury that he uh, got last year. David Fafita again. A couple of errors early on, man, for the big boy. He's trying too hard, man. Yeah. He's trying too hard. He knows there's a lot of pressure on him, you know. He's um he's he's he had like 19, 20 touches, which I love, mm. but you just don't want he put his three. team under pressure. You, know, you with just those don't errors. want three or four um, errors mm. in him. Yeah, you know, I'd rather just say, give me, give me, give me twenty touches. Yep. Just don't fucking really offload it when you when you don't have to. Would you give him one error because he's working? I'd give so him hard. one error. Yeah. I'd give him one error. But he right. can't. He can't. But I just have don't two. want that little flick like what yeah. I'm talking about. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like because it's, it's it's a nothing play. It just looks cool, but it just unless you can nail it and the try line's there. Not 30 metres out. Mm. You know what I mean? I want you to tuck the ball, run yourself, big man. Yeah. He's more dangerous when he does that. I can give him one error because he's trying so hard, fatigue. It's going to take him about three or four games to get back yep. to fitness, mate. And, That's fair. And he is fucking trying his ass off. And he is their only player that looks dangerous. Firmall's quite dangerous as well. Jaden Campbell a little bit. Jaden Campbell, but like – Need to be Brimo closer. Sinners hasn't worked. Brimo, fucking hell. It's not working. What do you do centers? with him? What do you do with him? Promoter five eight this week with Phil four and out. Yeah, just run. Yeah, early ball to uh, whoever your back rower is. If it's big for feeder, yep. don't even don't even try and put him through a hole. He creates his own shit. No, give him early ball. Just early him ball. underneath. Boyd uh, was it Tanner Boyd? I'm not sure how long you put up with him. He's had a few rough weeks. I don't think they've got it. They must have they that, that Tom have, Weaver kid. Plan I, th B. I, th I thought um, he could have been an option, but Desi's sticking with uh, Tanner Boyd. So I liked um, Jordan McLean. Yep. Had a good game. Tal Malolo, they started the game off good. Just yeah. one-two punch. And then you fucking Ruben Cotter, bro. He's a dog. God, he's good. He's a dog. If they weren't playing against the Titans, he's the dog of the week. Yeah. Just the way that he just – the ball playing that he has, the way he digs into the line, he cops his licks. Beautiful ball player. Hits hard, big minutes. And fucking to, scary. And to our point before, their back seven makes so many stupid errors. Mm. You could – uh, you wouldn't – if you are Ruben Cotter, you could understand him getting frustrated and fucking spraying Lose people. Shit. And Jace and all these sorts of guys. But they still – they're pretty trades. They make they make the job for the middles hard, harder for the Cowboys than it needs to be. Mm -hmm. If they just played the power game, kicked the corners – like even Tommy Dearden, I love Tommy Dearden. Fuck it. He needs a little bit of tempo in his game. He's so mm. erratic. He attacks the line so hard. He's strong too. He's so strong. But then he goes 100 miles an hour at the foreman, the back rower – Whips it out the back, cr creates uh, <laughs> yeah. a, an overlap, and then Drinkwater or Val Holmes ends up dropping it. But it's like, fuck, 
Tommy Dearden's playing so good. I don't know. Val Holmes was on too last night. Yeah. He but even good. he had a couple of errors Yeah, a couple well. of stoosh. He, he, he'll probably know better than anyone, He's probably right? the worst at it. Yeah. A quick tip on at the moment. Yeah, yeah, he's one of them. Shout out to Felt. Broke Mango's record. Yeah. Well done, kid. Pick to the house. He's um, Yeah, that was great. Um, But like, yeah, they're back five, back whatever. They just have a – that's something that they'll probably, you know, Todd Payton just like, we fucking can't make so many errors because our middles are doing so much more work mm. than they have to. And yeah. it gets them at the back end. You know, when you're playing against the Penrith, when you're playing against the Brisbane Broncos, they don't make those mistakes. No. And it ends up, you know. Ah, you won't not, not only lose, you'll get dusted. Yeah. All right, the last game, Raiders, they dust the Parramatta Eels 41 yes. to 8. This is a really concerning game for Parramatta. Um, Raiders bounce back the way you, you expect. Mm. Uh, I, they're similar to Dolphins to me. I don't think they can win the comp. Fuck, they're going to be a pain in the ass all year for, mm. for a lot of teams, specifically if you play them down there now going into winter. Yeah, I think I picked this game. I did. Um, I just thought that the, it means more to the Raiders getting pumped the week before mm. where Eels probably thought, yeah, we got – they just got away with the Tigers where the Raiders got pumped by the Sharks. It was embarrassing. Mm. And I expected this from them. I just didn't expect it by this much. Yeah. Shiller, I just, I just Savage, Tomoko, yeah. or 200 plus. Yeah, I didn't expect that. Um, yeah, Sh- Shiller was outstanding, wasn't he? Yeah, he's nice. Hey, he's got he's good uh, good pedigree. Uh, Matt Tim- Mullins, yeah, he's, yeah. A, he's from the Very Mullins. Very good pedigree, yeah. yeah. Mullins, Croakers, whatever uh, it is. Tim McCall extended throughout the week and he said one of the main reasons is they've got a good young core all coming through together. Yeah, Ricky highlighted man. after the game, Xavier Savage in particular, he goes, this is why I've been cuddling and, and trying to get the best out of this kid because this is what he's capable of. Yeah. Savage, Tim McCall, Schiller, Strange. Um, I like the Strange kid. Seb- Sebastian Chris. I like him. Smithies, Hudson Young, Tafts are still – Whitehead coming back, Tafts are still young, I'm, I'm still speaking, big papa. I'm speaking about the younger guys that are sort of – they're going to have a good team now for a horse, bro. The bro. Fuck, they've got a good team down there in Canberra. <laughs> the bro looks hey, all right. He, he, needed, my face. he had an awful game last week. Yep. He come back this week, hardly any mistakes, just played his typical just fucking hardcore redhead – just wants to bash everyone, fucking hard nut. What about when he's lying on the ground, when he takes that hit from Dylan Brown? And, and then, in the elbow. And then Guffa gets oh, him. He's he, fu- he, go, he immediately goes from So he had a heart attack. He goes like from, a refibrillator on him. Bang. Yeah, he was injured and then all of a sudden Guffa hits him and then he's I'm back. fighting. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love what they got going, going on down there. They lost some really key plays there last year with White and stuff like that. But, like, you know, Sticky had confidence in these young crop of kids coming out. And uh, they're doing the job, man. I love Timiko, bro. Mm, so do I. He's fucking strong. Yeah. It's really soft tries against the Eels, bro. Yeah, just so through the middle, coming off cross, coming off a cross play, step, 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 and then through your middle. <sighs> Come on, bro. Unacceptable. No, nah, not um, not when you not when you're supposed to be a top four team. Yes, they've got a top. They've got a top four, top eightish roster. Yeah. Well, you just. It, it, you can't have 41 put on you. Yeah. Um, Everyone hates playing. I know down Moses. In Canberra. Is, I know Moses isn't playing, but Talangi. He doesn't, look six. Like, he doesn't look like the answer at six. He no. looked good in the centres. I think moving back in the centres and I think he shot down uh, Ethan Sanders, the young kid that's playing uh, New South Wales Cup. So maybe Dijon Arce who looked okay last year. Filling put in someone in there for, in a seven, make D, D Brown get to um, to six and then put the young kid in the centres. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Because he's, he's, he, he's a ball runner. And, and the thing with Parramatta too, you knew, we all knew, anyone who knows Ricky Stewart or knows Rugby League knew Raiders were going to come with a performance this week. Parramatta knew, still got blown out 41. Which was the game I said there was going to be 13 plus? The Warriors or this one? One of them. I knew it was going to be a blowout. Let us know in the comments if, you, you know, no matter what, you're right. <laughs> I was thinking, I was just going to mention, I said, which one did I say? Which was going to. Or did you I, say Manly 13 plus against. Uh, no, no, Panthers? no, definitely not. I backed the Panthers. <laughs> Um, Para have got Cowboys next week. That'd be a good game. Yeah, at Para. Mm. Very similar. Yeah, fucking, they just attack. They make mistakes. They have got good props and got talent everywhere. So I think it'd be a great game. Yeah, it's could be like a thirty-six, thirty-two game. <laughs> yeah, for just for fuck sure. defense. Just yeah. whoever gets the most completion <laughs> rates wins. Yeah. <laughs> All right, mate. Um, All right. We'll see you on Thursday for the preview. Great work. See you guys.